Yesterday, day one of this Bassmaster Elite Series event on Pickwick Lake and plenty of evidence why this is one of the most explosive bass fisheries in the world. Last year's Angler of the Year, Clark Winlet, almost seven and a half pounds for the big bass and the leader, Kobe Krieger, 25 pounds and 12 ounces. Very good to these two anglers. Who will it be good to today? You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of Bassmaster Elite Series. Welcome to you. We got three hours of the Bassmaster Elite Series. Day number two competition of these four days of fishing at legendary Pickwick Lake on the Tennessee River. Florence, Alabama, that was the takeoff a few minutes ago. 100 anglers are full field getting ready to go out today. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona. And Mark Zona, we look at that leaderboard. It was very good to a lot of people today with everyone basically starting from scratch after their practice knowledge was wiped out by changes in this fishery. Exactly right, Tommy. And really two days postponed, these anglers were not on the water. And you kind of felt throughout day number one here on FS1 that they were putting it together as the day went along. And this has really turned into a, a small mouth versus large mouth game plan on Pickwick. And the other thing to really look at, at the top of that leaderboard is very misleading because the guys in the top 20 absolutely knocked their lights out but it was a case of haves and have nots because well some of the biggest names on the Bassmaster Elite Series I mean almost 20 percent of our field caught one bass or less yesterday on day number one. Yeah, that's right. We had six with 20 pounds plus and six with zero on this day. Exactly a case of the haves and have nots. And fair to say, Mark Zona, everywhere, a lot of people starting from scratch again today. So many changes as we go take a look at one of the big names from yesterday, Chris Zaldane, up by the Wilson Dam. And really taking a look at that Wilson Dam, so much water coming out of Wilson Lake into Pickwick. And it, it looks majestic right there. But when you are fishing at the bottom of that dam, so many tournaments won exactly where Chris Zaldane fished on day number one. And it started off pretty slow for Zaldane and some other anglers in that area. But as the sun got up, the bite got better. But when you look at the footage of this right here, he, here's the best way to put it. It is incredibly intimidating, the fish right there. It's it's almost like a giant toilet coming right at you. <laughs> thousands and thousands of gallons of water a second. But the one thing to be said about fishing below that Wilson Dam, you don't need many to, keep, to really get the job done. If you get five to seven bites here, the quality will be there by the end of the day. We don't know if there's going to be quite as much volume of water going through today. It's going to moderate as we go through the rest of this tournament here. But Chris Saldane certainly stuck with it yesterday and one of the few that really, really profited by staying there most all the day. Chris Saldane, of course, uh, on his way up there right now and getting set up. We talked to him just a moment ago at the weigh-in about the prospects for day two. All right, guys, here we go. It's uh, 6.49 in the morning, Sunday morning. There's plenty left where, uh, where I'm fishing. It, it's all about reading the water. Uh, conditions seem like they're changing every hour depending on the water flow. So you're having to identify all those little current breaks. I'm up for the challenge. It's a real physical day. We're up there in a the real fast current. It's gonna be a long, nice, easy day. Well, just as we were with Chris Aldane all day yesterday, we will be on him all day today. He's fishing really just a couple, three miles away from McFarland Park there in Florence there. That is our launch ramp, our fantastic host city here on the Tennessee River. We're so happy to have you with us. Just getting started here. Day number two in this tournament in which the first two days were postponed. So we should be at day three now. Actually, we're just on day number two. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Again, I'm Tommy Sanders. And uh, Mark Zona, uh, again, we got a lot of guys who are going to have to do another game plan, start from zero again today, because a lot of guys have some big time catching up to do. Yeah, and really what we've learned throughout the years below that Wilson Dam that we saw Chris Saldane going to, number one, when we got to see our colleague, Davey Height, who's going to be on the water all day long today, when we saw him won, when he won below that dam years ago, look, this time of year is when it happens there. The biggest smallmouth and largemouth really in the system, they feed there, they're aggressive, and the water, that water flow is, is literally start, it's going to start to slow down today. 
And really the slower that water gets, those guys are gonna be able to see those current seams. We're gonna hear that all day long. And I honestly think even though the weights were gigantic at the top yesterday, I, I literally think you're gonna see them go up today. All right, well, that's a great prospect, and uh, Ronnie Moore in the studio as well. And Ronnie, there's going to be volatility on that leaderboard. That's one thing we know for sure. Yeah, we got to see anglers catch them from the Wilson Dam all the way to the Pickwick Dam from basically all 70 miles of this playing field are in play this week. We'll, we'll see where the weights disperse, who will rise to the top, whether that mid-lake where Buddy Gross has been will continue to prosper or if it's going to be from dam to dam. All right, well, there's no doubt about the fact that it's one of the greatest playing fields ever for any group trying to fish a big-time <laughs> tournament. This uh, big, quick lake on the Tennessee River next to last lake. And Mark Zona, why don't you give us our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake in depth here? We will do that, my friend. Minn Kota Unlock the Lake right in northern Alabama on the Tennessee line. We're kind of borders into the corner of Mississippi. And really, you're looking at about from Pickwick Dam on the left all the way up to the Wilson Dam. I call it about a hair over 50 miles of water. As Ronnie said, there's some tributaries that come in that expand that. But the major thing, you look at our takeoff there in Florence, Alabama, the major thing today with possibly that water slowing down, the influx of all the water, finding stable water. Guys that find stable water, cleaner water today, possibly mid-lake down towards the Pickwick Dam, they may prosper where they failed on day number one. More often than not, our anglers are faced with a different lake every day, no matter where we go. Here's yesterday's leader. Starting the day with the lead, Kobe Krieger. Midwesterner who makes his home in Florida now. Veteran of the Bassmaster Elites here. Boy area he is fishing right there if there's some locals that are watching this there have probably been in that 30 yard stretch thousands of giant smallmouth caught through the years there he is there's one little guy i believe Might be a keeper. That broke my rod. That's what happens when you high stick them. Please be 15 inches this morning. I don't know if he is or not in size limit here on Pickwick, largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass, where we got to see all three of those yesterday. 15 inch 15. length limit. There's one, not what we're looking for, but we take them. And now is that a sign when you break your rod on the first fish of the morning, what's to come? The rest well, of yeah, the day I'm sure it is. I'm sure someone Krieger, would tell right? us what exactly what that means, but uh, I've forgotten for the time being. Uh, he's got more rods. We can bet on that. Boy, and you get a really good look at two of your anglers in the top 10. And both of these anglers more than likely will stay within two or three miles of that dam today. Talking to both of them last night. Your leader, Kobe Krieger, only had one bass yesterday at 1030. I think both of our anglers did at the top. Uh, Buddy Gross as well. You know, yeah. he had that one, maybe maybe yes. two fish by 1030. But yeah, it was slow until that midday portion. You know, one of the things that Krieger said, and it's smallmouth 101, I said, why did it get so good as the day went on, do you think? He said, look, man, you're dealing with a sight feeder. The higher the sun got, that water that's coming through that Wilson Dam right there was stirred up a lot yesterday morning. He said, the, the more it filtered out, the higher the sun got, they could just see better. They could track the bait better in that current. Uh, and that, he said, missed a lot of fish early. And that did not happen later in the day where he caught literally two or three limits of smallmouth and largemouth right there. Zaldane hooked up. Mm. 
There's the wrong species right there. That's going to be drum. And uh, Chris Aldane caught plenty of them yesterday. He caught just about the whole menu for uh, Lake Pickwick. They just, they're all down there eating. They're all down there feeding. Right. And, you know, Zell, one of the things Zaldane said is, you know, when this current flows like this is when they bite, but everything bites. You know, he said there's just a lot of life in that area. Looks like there's more competitors in that area yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, that's... Also in this area, Louisiana's Caleb Sumrall. New Iberia, Southwest Live. Louisiana. Oh. I think we got to see three of our top 10 that are on camera today are in the in the tail um, race region. Still early. Like I said the watercolor is most definitely dirty from yesterday, uh, dirtier than yesterday. Um, it doesn't mean that they're not here. They are here. We just gotta figure out how we go catch them today. Uh, sun will come up. It'll kind of change things up a little bit, I think. And then we're gonna go from there. I uh, can already tell there's a few more boats up here today. I was kind of planning for that, honestly. Um, Just gotta get right. This current is relentless, man. It's so much water. Getting a real good look at three of the anglers in your top 10 here on day two and and we talked about this yesterday on fs1 this is probably the most known community hole for the size of bass that are caught here every single year this time of year it's not a secret and you you ask yourself well why did the rest of the field not start here and stay here you know and join this party the, to fish there and be around all of those competitors is a mindset it's a it's a it's a style where you have to almost just block out that you're going to have to outfish the guy that's right next to you and there's just a population of our field that will not get in that mix some are all with 18 12 on day number one he's pretty good season so far 25th in angler of the year points Holding his own through the first two events. We got our first big fish of the day, a five pounder from Brandon Polinick. He wow. was in that region. I mentioned this morning. We didn't really see a five plus pounder get caught in that woodlands. You know, maybe maybe a one five pounder in that Koger region. Mm -hmm. uh, and Polinick off to a good start already. Once again, these anglers are not too far from McFarland Park, the fantastic facility for boat launch has been set up for well more than a decade now. And we've got some anglers working yeah. this area, not even, not even venturing <laughs> right. out, not starting the big engine, Gary Klaus, who had a great start at our first stop of the year. Doing there, Daryl Gleason. Toledo Bend, a Manny, Louisiana native. Gonna try his luck there. Had some frustrations going yesterday, as did so many of our anglers. It was not equally great for everyone in this field. But it seems like all of our anglers are getting really close today, Tommy yeah, Sanders, right. which could be a little bit of excitement for all of the viewers. Oh, yeah. Plenty on tap for today. We've got a lot of moves to track as we go through uh, eight hours of fishing on average for these anglers today. Toby Krieger still on top. He's got one in the boat, our leader to start this day. Steve Kennedy just outside the top 10 moving in. Buddy Gross, Bill Lowen, and Chad Pipkins will be with all three of those anglers today. We'll take a break and come right back. The Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, and by 
Nitro Boats. A transform basically has had another lake poured on top of it right before we were set to start by tremendous rains in the area. A lot of problems for the greatest anglers around to figure out. Some of them did yesterday. Some of those did not. Our rules of the game, it is a four-day tournament. We will wrap it up on Tuesday. Got 100 anglers out there today as we did have yesterday. That's a full field. We'll cut it. 250 after today. Each angler gets eight hours plus a little extra to fish each day. The five heaviest bass score, the aggregate score. On the final day, top 10 championship Tuesday. We'll hold up that trophy for the third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Our TH Marine Weather Watch today, just a gorgeous day again. High of 62 oh. degrees, a little warmer tonight, mostly sunny all day long. The sorts of things that uh, our leader to start the day, Kobe Krieger, said uh, worked in his favor. That sunshine, the, the, the temperatures, the visibility of the bait getting better as we progress through the days of this tournament. You know, and, and really looking at that aerial of everybody fishing up by the dam, you need to make note of not everybody that fished there caught them yesterday. You know, we're with the leaders today, but there was a lot of anglers that did not do very well. Again, in this area of the lake, in the mid-lake section of Pickwick, uh, with rookie gonna, Joshua uh, Straysner. fish a couple alive. of little areas. I caught them in yesterday. It won't take long. And, uh, I think we're going to go run some new water. I'm going to head on further down the lake. And pretty much just ride around, look for something that kind of resembles this little area here, just some backwater that was dry during practice. And uh, I'd caught them offshore during practice, but with all this flooding going on, high water and current, it just, I, the few, what few places I found out there, they're just not there. So I'm just, pretty much just went to the bank and those, these same areas and picking off a few here and there. Just, uh, there's not a whole, whole lot of them up shallow. I hope there's more more coming every day, but uh, I had one bite real quick here this morning. I just missed it, whatever it was, but hopefully we can find five keepers. That's my main goal today, just catch five keepers, whether they're big or small. So. Nice shot of Joshua Straysner from the weigh-in yesterday, 18 pounds and 12 ounces. This rookie from right here in the state of Alabama with the uh, Boy, he has done things right, having a great season so far, currently standing uh, eighth place. Bassmaster Angler of the Year points had a very good start, top 20 in his very first Elite Series event to start this season. Growing up in Alabama, I actually said he does not have a lot of experience or, or confidence right. fishing here at Pickwick. It's where they're sitting out of the current. The bass are there too. Only caught I mean, seven keepers yesterday, but they were the right uh, ones, just under just, 20 pounds. You know, you hope you don't have to weed through as many, but you, you're going to have to weed through trash fish. You can go catch a lot of, go catch a lot of drum today. A lot of catfish. And hopefully a lot of big old bass. You know, if you're looking at your three anglers, Zaldane, Krieger, Sumrall right there too, if you've never been to this area, Ron Moore said it yesterday, it's a, it's a fishing destination, that little half mile to, to two mile stretch that those guys are fishing in, but it is a absolute minefield under the water, veins of rocks, giant, giant boulders, but that's also what makes that special. You know, literally where they're sitting right there seven days ago there was a lot of dry ground you know with the influx of the water surprisingly zaldane one of the anglers that said the majority of his bites came yesterday in 10 to 20 feet of water where he's sitting right now that is a legendary place this giant rocky shoal is uh, you know the original muscle shoals that they talked about the, the probably the biggest rapids on the entire tennessee river before they built these uh, built these impoundments that we have now. They could only get flat boats through here. They couldn't even have river boats until uh, they built this TVA system back in the early part of the 20th century. Got it passing behind them rocks. The fish are sitting just behind them rocks. Whatever 
whatever you're throwing. You can't just be chunking and winding. You have to be down there taking the rocks, getting hung. Caleb Summerall talking about where your bait needs to be. It's not just easy once you get up there. And Chris Aldane said that same thing. He confirmed it yesterday. His Throwing swim bait needed ounce. to be on the bottom. And that's why bait right now. getting hung up was a possibility, but catching fish was one as well. Put the Krieger hook up. I feel like this could be a deal. Oh, you're gonna be a large mouth. Be something we can use. Oh yeah, big brownie. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Barely hooked. Yes. Definitely fishing tomorrow, boys. Now it's time to get down to business. Yeah, number two. All right, boys. Three pounder anyways. When you see how that fish was built, I mean, really only a 16 and a half inch fish, but that is a solid see, three pounder. A lot of these fish that plug. You didn't even get it. Maximum weight this of time of year. If you're just joining us, that was Kobe Krieger. Started the day with the lead today. He's already put two fish in the live well and. You can see how well he's out distancing early on his fellow competitors in this very uh, notable fishing spot on Pickwick. You know, and Tommy, looking at Krieger and, and got, so many of our viewers from yesterday. <laughs> that that have fished here, you know, he's I in a massive a slack you, water you eddy. Gets in the boat and he says that the guy yesterday didn't catch anything. You're like, oh no, not good. He's about a, not even a quarter mile downriver of Zaldane and Summerall, but a, a lot more slack water where Kobe is right there. And it almost actually, that current actually kind of sweeps downstream and comes back up and, and makes a real soft current spot right there. But again, massive rock where Krieger that is. That big spinnerbait on I got laid there too. Some are all hooked up. There's another catfish. Our drum. Look at this joker. Good, not almighty. I mean, a good catfish right there, Tommy. <laughs> Solid. Yeah. <laughs> Not usable in the context of the tournament, but pretty well, impressive. Pretty nip piercing. It looks like Joshua Straysner is on another planet fishing <laughs> compared to the other three. <laughs> Actually, a correction right there, Kobe. That, that little island right there, over that island, is where Zeldane and Summerall is. I thought he was further downstream. Further down, yeah. Yeah, he's very close to where Davey Height won a few years ago. Yeah, our, our associate, our man on the water and at the weigh-in.
We'll get with Davey a little bit later to give us an update on what's going mm -hmm. on up there in that place he knows so well. And I will tell you what, Kobe Krieger showing a pretty good knowledge of the mechanics of the current here in this special place on Pickwick. Oh, yeah. Big brownie. So we're weird, you know, little hundred yard stretch right there, catching a solid large mop, backing it up with a big small mop. Thank so you. rare to see that throughout yeah. this country Thank where you. they kind of mix and live together. But it's this solid this morning. Look for uh, big fireworks throughout the day right below the Wilson Dam. Kobe Krieger with almost 26 pounds on day number one. But we got 99 other anglers trying to make it into the top 50. That's your job for today. If you want to fish on day number three, we will be right back. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of Bassmaster Elite Series. Well, today the best season ever continues on Fox as NASCAR Cup Series rolls into Atlanta, where every turn is its own test. You can catch all the action for the Folds of Honor, Quick Trip 500, at 3 Eastern on Fox and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Big Sports yeah. Sunday going on for sure. Here's one of our big stars from yesterday, another veteran, Bill Lowen. Really caught him well on that day one, really figured out the, how to deal with all the changes that Pickwick Lake was dealt right before this tournament was scheduled to start. Right out to Bill Lowen right now, the veteran from uh, the Ohio River, which is where this water is headed. All right, we just got to our starting spot. Um, actually, I started in these trees right here yesterday. You know, there's current ripping through here. There's just a, um, and big trees make a lot of current breaks. Out behind me is a big giant grass flat. That's a, you know, a popular area here on the lake. Um, and I just assumed yesterday that all the fish, a lot of the fish that were out there behind me, would actually pull into these trees, and that's what happened. So we ain't got a bite yet. We're getting ready to get in here and start working on these trees, uh, flipping around a 3 8 right now, black and blue jig. Um, I'm gonna work up through here and see if I can't get a bite. It's a little chilly this morning. My toes are cold, but it's breakfast time. Somebody needs a bite. Doesn't look to me like there's as much current running through here today as there was yesterday. Bill Lowen growing up on the Ohio River, as you said, Tommy Sanders, and so many of our anglers were intimidated by the dirty, the muddy water that came into here. He said, man, this is clean where I grew <laughs> up. And and the other thing that he said with this rising water, if you look look over his shoulder right there, he said he talked about that massive, massive grass flat. So many events, you know, besides that area below the tail race, this was predicted to be the other two or three mile stretch that was gonna dominate in this tournament with all of that grass, a lot more largemouth in this vicinity of Pickwick than say, you know, fishing up near the dam, catching a lot more smallmouth. But Lowen also made the comment, he said, it was insane how shallow he caught him yesterday. He said, if there was enough water to get over those fish's back, you know, six to eight inches of water, that's where some of his bigger bites came on day number one. 21-3 yesterday for Bill Lowen for third place behind Kobe Krieger and Buddy Gross. Brock Mosley from neighboring Mississippi. I mean, if anyone from Mississippi that grew up in Mississippi wanted to fish smallmouth, what a great gift this place has been for them, Pickwick Lake. And he learned how to catch them very, very well as he has proven time and again. Still making his way to a place that he feels like is gonna pay off for him. Whoa. Is that Davey? Oh, is that, is that our man Davey Hyde? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't yeah, look the, like his the general clothing <laughs> scheme there, no. No, yeah. that's not Davey. We do not recommend not doing Davey. that when you are out on the no. boat. No, not one bit. No, don't do that. Tommy, Especially you were... <laughs> below a tail race, Ronnie. <laughs> Tommy, you were saying, Brock Mosley, if you want to catch smallmouth and you're from Mississippi to come to Pickwick, if you really want to catch any good bass, like you need to go to go to Pickwick from Mississippi well. and, and make the trip. No, I'm just kidding. I have to do that. that. But, but it is a great venue that shows a lot of different looks for those anglers in Mississippi, the Justin Atkins of the world, the Brock Mosleys that grew up in Mississippi. This is a great lake that taught them a whole lot so they could travel the nation and compete on the Elite Series it, the way they do. It is a remarkable place. But every time we come to the Tennessee River, 
like that guy on the front of the boat. <laughs> It, it just seems normal, even though we absolutely do not condone doing that. <laughs> no. Nope. Those are the things you see here. Abnormal is normal most of the time. Say so we slide back down from the lake right now, just above Cogar Island. Oh, definitely a lot of damage done. Chad Pipkins yesterday, and we got to check in with him about one o'clock mm -hmm. yesterday, and he upgraded steadily to our way and out to Chad Pipkins Live. Didn't bring it in the boat. And it was a big one. Well, we're here. We're ready to ready to get after it. I didn't catch one yesterday till probably nine or so. So I'm not trying to set the world on fire just yet. I did have one, felt like a pretty big one bump a lipless and knock like a foot of slack in my line. I just didn't hook up and I probably had that, you know, 15, 20 times yesterday with a chatterbait. So I, they're down here. I mean, I can see them on that Hummingbird 360. Like tw two or three times I could feel my bait come across one's back and then they kind of scoot off. So it's so close to getting crazy good. Like when they decide to bite in the next, these next two, three days, I mean, if we could get out here Monday, Tuesday, it could get stupid. I think I caught maybe 15 yesterday and missed another five, six at least. And I think that could double or triple if it gets right, you know, but we just gotta survive and be patient. Like they're in this, you know, quarter mile stretch down through here and some nice grass down here, the right kind of current. And we're gonna be patient. I don't like to sit put usually, but we're gonna do what needs to be done here, I think. And that's kind of the deal. Just slow and steady in and out of this grass and drag it across a couple eight pound noses and make it happen. I'm ready. They're fat. We just need to get a couple bites. Looks like the current well, changed Pipkins. a little. So, I mean, I'm not a huge current guy, but the water dropped three or four inches, and that bar that sticks out here, they could have slid over 20 yards, and I might just be missing where they're active. So, I'm gonna kind of keep exploring a little bit and until we find them or find the cast. We're getting close. 21-2 yesterday There's for Pipkins, no was in fourth place. Oh, Krieger, another one? I don't know if that one's gonna, nope. I don't think that'll make it. Yeah. But you heard Pipkins say that he missed, you know, 15 to 20 bass yesterday and that, you know, he's fishing just upstream from Cogar Island. It, it, as many tens of thousands of bass that are in that area, they're not dumb. I mean, they are very, this lake, it's, a, you know, just like Gunnersville and Wilson and Wheeler, anywhere really on the Tennessee River, especially this time of year. But they will get in little, you know, we talked about little windows, timing windows where they'll bite. But for a lot of the day, it, it's it, it's frustrating. You know, you and, and the other thing is, you know, that they're quality, they're good fish that are biting and they're just not committing to the bait. First look at Buddy Gross, had to, as we mentioned, big day uh, from about 11, a big day from 11 to 12 yesterday. I mean, he just absolutely loaded up on a, one of many of those gravel bars that are out there that he had marked and found one with the fish on it. Yeah, and that's the, you know, river fishing 101 but when you also put river fishing and springtime together man it was just little windows on day one where these fish would feed like you said tommy for maybe 20 to 40 minutes and at the end of those 40 minutes you have a giant stringer in your live well we got a big move up the leaderboard for hank cherry on bass track Started the tournament in, or started after day one around 34th place. 15 and a half pounds a solid day. About two pounds and change above the cut. A limit for 13.5 with a four pounder for his big one. Jumped into third place. Still a reigning classic champ. Uh, took he, that honor uh, more than a year ago at Gunnersville. He was given yesterday at weigh-in by Chase Anderson, Bassmaster 
owner gave him a miniature flag that the the rafters we hang the banners the flags in the rafters oh. of the classic champs all right he was he was given his miniature one yesterday kind of like getting your ring for winning the championship you know at the start of the next year he got his flag uh at this event and was able to he can take that now home and cherish very nice the top accomplishment big, best, big the stage big dreams yes sir Wanted to bring it in real quick, Tommy, before uh, I hop upstairs to uh, the other studio to be able to show you something at the monitor for the stats day one. We had 100 anglers. Like we said, tournament was supposed to be started on Thursday. Day one was Thursday. High current, a lot of debris and whatnot made it unsafe Thursday and Friday, so they postponed it. Yesterday was day one. Anglers hadn't really practiced for three days. That's the last time they had seen the fishery. And so about half of our anglers caught a limit yesterday. Some really good anglers in the leaderboard that didn't catch a limit. Only four fish, but great weight, good sized fish. We saw our big bass from day one, Clark Winlet, a seven pound, six ounce fish. Brandon Card almost tied that, had a seven five uh, just shortly after at weigh in for him. Kobe Krieger had a big uh, six plus pounder for a smallmouth, and that let Kobe Krieger have a 25 pound, 12 ounce bag for Pickwick. That's a great bag. Overall, for the country, that's a huge bag. The third biggest bag of the season weighed in so far. Only the third event of the year, but that's a very good weight. We should see a couple bags rival that at some point uh, this week. The cut weight, a solid weight, 13 pounds and an ounce for 50th place. And that's the key today. It's moving day, 100 anglers fishing. And to make semifinal Monday, you need to be in the top 50. So 13 1 is the cut for 50. And I wanted to jump also into Rapala Fantasy ah. Fishing real quick on kind of the, <laughs> the blue bloods, the guys that, that are really the proven ones on the Tennessee River, the ones that you choose and are, and are highly chosen for Justin Atkins, Greg Hackney, and Chris Zaldane, the three highest chosen anglers in fantasy fishing. 49%, 38%, and 23% by the fans of the sport. Over 35,000 players of fantasy fishing. Atkins, Hackney, and Zaldane all did their job yesterday. Inside the cut, Hackney in 39th, or uh, Atkins in 39th, Hackney in 32nd, and Zaldane obviously in 5th. We're watching him today. So when it comes to the guys that are proven on the lake, you have high percentages. Sometimes you're skeptical on who to choose, but those guys have came through, and, and you know, it's it's March Madness time. They are the blue bloods on the Tennessee ah, River nice. for a reason. The Chalksters are still exactly. in the game. So exactly. that's, yes. you know, good news for a lot of our fantasy players out there. Thank you, Ronnie exactly. Moore, the master of the screen of knowledge back out on the water. This just happened moments ago. Buddy Gross putting one in the boat, not a giant. He doesn't want to really take that one to the weigh-in, but it will go in the live well for the time being, see if he can get something cranked up and started. Early on, just finished up our first hour of angling for most of our anglers today. Still Kobe Krieger on top. Brandon Polinick, who has fished his way back into the top 10. He struck early yesterday as well. He bears watching through the day, and as Ronnie mentioned, Hank Cherry, our classic champ, making some big noise on day number two. Be back. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. The fabulous year in and year out Pickwick Lake. Day two action coming to you live. One of the big players yesterday was Bill Lowen. Going oh, right yeah. out to Bill Lowen right now, the river fisherman extraordinaire. Key laydowns, he said, throughout day number one. One of the other things Lowen said, he never went through the same area twice hmm. trying to expand on this region of the lake. Yeah, that's the way to start the morning. Woo! Big old Nancy right there. Or as my daughter would say, a womp bird. <laughs> yes! Yeah, boy, that's the way to start the day right there. Close to five, probably. <sighs> Man, that is absolutely what lives here in this region of the lake. So many local tournaments dominated. 
uh, on those grass flats just over Lowen's left hand down shoulder. There and the boat was about to drift on top of it. And I could just barely see it. Uh, nothing better than they whop that jig. Nothing better. And the other thing that's better than that is when you set the, set the hook and the rod doesn't move. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Woo! I feel like I've got to puke. <laughs> uh, that, my friend, is what it's all about. Ugh. Heart can't take it. Heart can't take it. I know you saw this, Mark Zona. Bass Times, one of the Bassmaster publications last week. On the cover, Bill Lowen, How to Fish yes. Pre-Spawn on the River. <laughs> that's that's Brian Brash well, that keeping was it, it relevant. Tommy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gonna head back up to the tail race of the Wilson Dam as it comes into Pickwick with your day one leader, Kobe Krieger. Great catch from Bill Lowen right there. And for everybody watches, watching this at home, where Lowen caught that fish, that was dry land five yeah. days ago. <laughs> Three. Number three, not the right side. Just a keeper. We, we inching forward. Krieger mixing it up a lot today from a crankbait to a spinnerbait. A lot of his damage late yesterday on a big soft plastic swim bait. back down Pickwick right now. Buddy Gross fishing exactly where he caught him in that flurry on day one, midday. And he caught some absolute giants on this little shallow point. I think like you said about Bill Lowen, this is another place that was dry land. Uh, yes. Six days ago. How about a six pounder from Scott Martin? Starting the day off right. First fish. That's a good one, I think. Anybody's hooked up? for Buddy Gross right there. Had a one-two punch, a one ounce lipless crankbait. That's the one he has in his hand right there and a three-quarter ounce nickel spinner bait, which kind of attested to his giants that he caught yesterday. He lost one big one. He wasn't coming off. To describe that special little spot that he has right here, all it is is just a, just a real shallow point. Mm -hmm. He's casting over the point, his bait's landing in about eight feet of water, coming over it in four feet. And really, a lot of these bigger fish were on the back side, the soft current side, the down current side of that point in about, call it six to 10 feet of water, a little bit of, little bit of gravel, uh, stubble grass, as Buddy Gross called it, not real high grass. But he said it's just a stop sign. It's a, it's a stopping point before the fish go back into that pocket. Good look at it there with our hummingbird bird's eye view. And three days ago, we would not have had fog vapors coming off the water. It was blowing 15 to 20 all day long. It, you know, what's funny was I asked Buddy, I said, did you catch many fish on this in practice? 
And he said, no, I marked it. I, I put a, a GPS. I put a waypoint on it. He said, no, it, literally, it was land. There was no reason to get to it. That's amazing. Buddy Gross picked up his Elite Series win, number one on his rookie season with the Elites last year. You know, something we didn't see yesterday. He was left alone the entire day. Hmm. Yeah, we just got down here. We're a lot earlier today than what we did yesterday. We didn't get here probably 1030, 1045 yesterday, so I don't know how they're going to act. There's not a whole lot of them set up on top of it right now. I can see that for sure. We have caught two small ones. As long as we can keep getting some bites, I'm gonna stick with it till at least you know midday, just to see if I can get to catch them when they're coming in and out. I, I still think they're sitting out there on the edge and they pull up here to feed. But we got a uh, we got a little bit of action so far. I've seen some bait already on the 360, so I still feel good about it. I just hope them big ones come back through today. So they seem to be hitting it real light so far this morning current seems, I mean, they're generating a lot, but the current's not running by this point like it was yesterday, so there may have been a lot of wind-driven current too, so I don't know if that's going to affect them. I'm starting to move up at just a little bit to see if they might have bulled in a little tighter, but there's not as much current. But we're fishing. Got my Mardi Gras. I about hit the drone. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I about took the drone out. That ball stayed here all night, now it's going across the lake. one of the residents at Chickamauga, also on the Tennessee River, about 250, 300 miles up the river from here. But he just mentioned I almost took the drone out throwing his, his big uh, That would be absolutely sweet. <laughs> hope not, I hope it does. Oh, wow. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Giant three-quarter ounce nickel spinnerbait right to the grill. <laughs> you know, Buddy Gross, he kept a lot of other areas honest on day one. Stopped at two or three different places, and it was painfully slow. But when he landed on this at, you know, gosh, as you said, Tommy Sanders around... Seems like it was about 10 30 to 11 o'clock. It was 60 minutes of insanity right here. One of the best fishermen, deep water fishermen on the Tennessee River. Fishes Lake Chickamauga, lives just off the shores there. And and really has a great record here, but said he does not fish here this time of year a lot. He said there's really no reason to leave his home lake, one of the best lakes in the country, Chickamauga. Well, let's let Buddy fish on here. Let's take a second here to take a look at something from Steve Kennedy. Find it interesting. Oh yeah! Absolutely gorgeous place here. There's some uh, springs coming out of the rocks. When I say there's springs. There may be leaks out of the lake. But, uh, but absolutely gorgeous place. And big, big smallmouth. Did I say that? <laughs> I just I need to catch one. It's 
an extremely difficult area to feed. The current slowed down just a little bit from yesterday, which makes it easier to fish, but I don't, there's a big one, wow. Choppy footage right there. Steve Kennedy with a good one here on the opposite <laughs> side, the south side of the tail race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, pardon me. How's that? <laughs> it is a gorgeous piece. Big fat small mouth there for Steve Kenny. Thanks to his marshal, uh, Steve outside the top ten for providing us with that footage. That was a nice catch. Little phone right work right there, Tommy Sanders. Absolutely. Still going to be your leader to start the day, Kobe Krieger. And a couple of fish in the boat. He's got it going just the way he wants it. He knows he'll be fishing tomorrow and very likely fishing on Championship Tuesday. Who else is going to make it into the top fifty today? So many questions. Be right back. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of Bassmaster Elite Series. Bluffs and relentless current of Pickwick Lake to a very different setting. The Sabine River, Orange, Texas, Southeast Texas as the Sabine River makes its way toward the Gulf. Lots of twists and turns, lots of places to hide. Very challenging fishery and there's your winner. From the last time we were there, Craig Hackney, he will be uh, sort of defending, in a way, his championship there, in which he really blew him out on the Sabine River, Mark Zone. Yeah, Greg Hackney will be smiling throughout that entire event. I can tr trust me, he was not after the day one weigh-in yesterday. No. No. And not a bad showing, 32nd yeah. place right now. Going to get back on the water right now with Buddy Gross, two fish in his live well. Number three. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Not the Giants that we mm -hmm. saw on day one, but he is way past schedule. Oh, yeah. He had uh, very little, if anything, at this point uh, on day number one. And again, it didn't get going for him until uh, till midday, till 11 a.m. local time. Boy, Buddy Gross's head, though, he is on a swivel this morning looking around i think there's a lot more company in that area as there is in this area it only looks like there's two or three anglers right there but in looking at our map there is a lot more company up near the tail race today kobe krieger your day one leader currently sitting in first place but there's about from where he's at to mcfarland park our takeoff there's about 25 percent of the field fishing in a two mile stretch today. There he is. Good one. Stripe. Dang, nab it. Oh, stripe. Well, that's part of the doing business up here in this section of Pickwick Lake there. That tail race, there are all sorts of species and they're all eaten. Boy, they are going at it all day long. We've 
Now joined by the man who really made his last Elite Series victory up there, his most recent one, we should say, number eight for Davey Height. And how has it changed yesterday, this, this famous horseshoe area, Davey, versus yesterday, or has it changed at all? Well, there's more fishermen up here today. Uh, it's not a secret area by any means, but I think a lot of people just wrote this area off and uh, we saw several, I guess three of the top 10 uh, weights came from here yesterday. So there's a few more people around, but the it, very ironic, right before you guys came to me, that horn just, just sounded like we heard way back 10 years ago when I was here the final day. So as, as swift as this water is, they're about to start generating and pulling a lot more water through here. So it really could help the fishing. Uh, I'm right here with Chris Zaldane and uh, just seen him catch a few drum and that sort of thing. But this is a deal where you've got to commit to it. Stay here all day, keep your head down. It is physically, mentally uh, exhausting because this current uh, and, and you've got to stay focused. It's, it's really, really difficult. But Chris Zaldane, you can tell he's all in on this area. Davey, it was an absolute circus when you won there a decade ago. There was boats everywhere. But the thing is, when they're biting there, the quality, you don't need a lot of bites. But is this kind of the case, as, as grouped up as these anglers are, do you think that they will end up kind of cannibalizing each other to where nobody has a shot at winning this time around? Well, you think that, Z, but honestly, as crowded as it looks right now, there were more more boats here uh, 10 years ago when I won the Elite here. So it's, it's really not quite as many. It's just a deal where you've got to put your head down and you got to say, I'm going to outfish everyone here. And it, that's tough to do. And you start second guessing yourself. People will come, people go. Justin Atkins was here for about 30 minutes and you could tell he really got frustrated. There's so many boats here, but it's a deal where you're all in. You got to put your head down and say, I'm going to outfish everyone else here. Davey, everything looks the same. Everything looks the same over your shoulder. When we look at the aerials, for somebody watching on FS1, these guys, especially the guys that caught them on day one, they are making exact, precise casts and kind of talk about what's going on and why that is such a key cast. Well, we may have lost Davey there, but we're going to keep Davey on camera one way or another. Let's take you into the old time machine back to 10 years ago, 2011, the final day. And Davey Height had fished well enough to put himself in the lead going into that day. Fishing this spot where we just talked to him right there. And Mark Zona, you and I were sitting there watching him. And it was a waiting game. He had to wait for them to turn those generators on. And, and when they did, man, it was on. Yeah, I was actually in Davey's boat that day. It was so peaceful below that Wilson Dam. It was enjoyable, and he literally waited for them to turn that one turbine on. And when they sounded that horn, like Davey said, you literally, you saw light. You saw birds coming to the dam. Everything exploded, and he got his work done, literally, uh, like we got to see yesterday with Buddy Gross down lake in about 45 minutes to an hour every single day. But as Davey said, the entire thing is a waiting game, a process. And if you watched on day number one, it was eerily similar to Davy's win. A lot of these bigger fish were caught from noon on yesterday. It was his 17th year with the Bass Masters, which included a Boy, it's classic, popular there. Yeah, a classic <laughs> championship, two Angler of the Year, Davy Heitman, the legend. Oh boy. See the way our head anglers. back down Pickwick right now with Clark Wendlet. Clark actually doing something that a lot of anglers ignored as we go past Coffee Slough. When you get kind of near Coger Island, a lot of other anglers in that region of the lake so far in this tournament. And Clark Wendlet said he went as far down lake as possible near the Pickwick Dam, looking for a little steeper banks, and really said, Man, I hardly saw any other competitors on day one of this tournament. Something, well, nobody said yesterday. <laughs> That's about where he was when he caught his Phoenix Boats Big Bass, the seven pound, six ouncer yesterday. Steeper banks. 
pockets with steeper banks. Number one key for Clark on day one. Maybe a keeper. I think so, hopefully. Clark not with didn't catch many keepers yesterday, but he definitely had the size day one Barely. of this event. He didn't have to black bump many. Black spot on his tail. I love that. You get a third of your weight out of one fish. That's doing something. Well, last year, 2020, Winglet fulfilled a lifelong dream becoming Bassmaster Angler of the Year as we take a look at our Skeeter Boats Angler of the Year watch. And let's be honest, it's the lifelong dream of every angler out there. And look now, we have a tie at the top of those standings as they are updated to start this day. Greg Hackney and young Patrick Walters, each with 262 points. Brian New, who won our first event of the year. Seth Fighter from up north in Minnesota. Big, diverse leaderboard there, and we will keep tracking that and much more when we return. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of Bassmaster Elite Series. Saturday, April 3rd, MLB is back as the Braves face Bryce Harper and the Phillies. Then, the reigning champion Dodgers take on the Rockies all on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. How about that? Spring is in the air on this first it day is, of Tommy. spring 2021. March 21st is the day, and boy, I tell you what, couldn't be a better place than right here. One of the great Tennessee River Lakes, Pickwick Lake. Bill Lowen, one of the anglers who did very, very well, third place. It was all said and done on yesterday, day one of these four days of fishing. Exactly right, Bill Lowen saying if this water stays up, if it just stays near, you can help. Bill Lowen hooked up right here. He's gonna make it. Caught that fish off of the 360 on a log and laying out there. He's gonna be close. Oh yeah. Number two, smally. Right there is a prime example of why that 360 is so important. You know, it doesn't look like there's anything out there in front of me. Now I can see a log on my 360. And I caught that fish off of it. Fish number two for Bill Lowen. Small mouth. He's got uh, one of each large mouth and small mouth in the live well now. Said he saw that lay down under the water on his Mega 360. And Lowen said as long as this water stays high with color, he was going to be in pretty good shape and felt like there was more coming. There it is right there at the top of the screen. Here it is right here coming up. I literally caught that fish right off the head of that lay down right there. Pretty cool to be able to see that. I mean, typically you'd never make a cast out here and to be able to have that right there to let me know that that lay down's right there. Bill Lowen providing our hummingbird deal. unlock the lake there with what has become an essential piece of gear for everyone oh, wow. who's going to compete oh, wow. at this level. That is a great shot right, right there of the lay down that he caught that smallmouth off of. 360 rules. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Like ha having eyes below the water. Going to head back up towards the tail race right now. Brandon Palmick. Climb from 17th with another bag near 17 pounds to take the lead over Kobe Krieger. Wow. Pollock did his good work early yesterday wow. as well. Man, look at Kobe Krieger. <laughs> did you look at wow. that. Hey, hey, seriously, something about Krieger on day number one. Look, that's what it's been taking to win tournaments here. Five bass that weigh 25 pounds, which Ron Moore said that is a phenomenal catch anywhere in the country. That is a huge stringer, but to do it in these conditions, I'm, I look at over his shoulder. That's like a three foot rise of water. Oh, 
it's a big old, big old brownie, boys. Yes, yes, bam! <laughs> Woo! It's a big one. Davy Height said it. A lot of other competitors in that area. You're just basically going to have to outfish everybody around you. So far on day two, Krieger's done exactly that. That is a giant Pickwick smallmouth. Yeah. Four more like this, boys. Four more like that. This one's going in this side. I mean, seriously, there was like a three well, foot elevation man, man. over his shoulder. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, they can't see that bait yet. I know they're right there, they can't see it. I know that's what it is. Man, that is a cool catch. Yes! You know, when you first come to this place, you think to yourself, there is no way a bass lives in that right there. <laughs> They are right in the middle of it. You know, they talk about fishing current breaks, but you're not just dropping it in an eddy. Sometimes you're putting it right in the rapids. Right. And, and you know, we've seen that on, you know, whether we've been at the Alabama River, Coosa River, when this, when they flush these lakes and they open every single gate, that is, that is feeding time. You know, that is the buffet coming to these, literally, it's the fan that brings the food to these fish. Awesome catch by Kobe right there. Brandon's lead didn't last long. No, was, five pounder there. That's his fourth fish. He's back in the lead. Slugfest. At Kobe the top Krieger. Of the now, and, hey, and, and and this is what's really cool right now about watching Krieger this morning. This is absolutely not how he caught him in that area on day one. Starting to expand at least how to catch them. Going to get back down pick with right now with Buddy Gross. It seems so much more peaceful right there. <laughs> yeah. Leaderboard's moving. Scott Martin had that six pounder earlier. He's at a 312. He's back in our top 10. It's seventh. Oh, he barely got it. Gosh dang it. You little son of a beast. Get... Got to see Buddy lose a couple yesterday. One giant, he said, was between six and seven pounds. And he had two six pounders yesterday in his 23 pound bag. Exactly. If he would have had three, he'd be a uh, top Krieger. Yeah, he 100% would have. Very similar to that big one he lost yesterday. Just right at the boat. Back above Coger Island right now. Chad Pipkins fishing a, not a real big area, Tommy. About a, call it a quarter mile stretch. Little soft current breaks in the grass. Just off the main river. They'll make something happen here. Really lived, lived with a bladed jig almost the entire day yesterday. Plagued by losing some big ones, just like Buddy Gross. Can't catch them, see? Yeah. See, I can't even catch the dang thing. They swim so fast at you. So fast. That's a challenge. I had one hit it there. Oh, he got it. That's what I was talking about running the See the channel jig. marker. Like, I thought he missed it, and then there's slack line. I'm reeling as fast as I can reel. Good keeper. A good solid keeper for Chad Pipkin. Pipkins. You, you see that island right off of the main river, and one of the things Pipkin said earlier, missing a lot of fish. A lot of those fish will slap at your bait and instantly head downstream, what we got to see with that last yeah. fish. Yes, sir. 
should get him back into the top ten. He'd fallen out. Right. To catch him 21-2 on day number one. Great Enough. day one for Chad. Yeah. Look out. Yeah. Here we go, Here we go. Might have slid back a little bit. That one thumped it. We talked so about flurries, all, Tommy. So starting mm. to see that happen and really starting to see these guys, our baby. leaders, dialing in exactly where these fish are setting up in the current. Certainly seem to be turned on right now as we're well into our second hour of eight hours of fishing for these 100 anglers out here on day number two. The Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. And by Skeeter Boats. Good Sunday morning to you as we bring you live coverage of one of the nine. Very important regular season big event stops for the Bassmaster Elite Series. This guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Pickwick Lake. Scheduled to have started on Thursday. We actually started it on ah. Monday because of conditions preventing the uh, the use of the lake on Thursday and Friday. But boy, we've been using it today. Very lively session this morning. Kobe Krieger started this day with the lead. Fell out of it only briefly. Run down by Brandon Polinick, but uh, he's back on top now. And it's really kind of exactly what we saw on day number one. The large mouth guys. And granted, Kobe Krieger, you know, you see guys like, you know, Buddy Gross, Hank Cherry, Scott Martin, though. Really what's transpired is these large mouths seem to bite a lot earlier. And as those skies get a lot higher, the smallies really, if you looked at day number one, Tommy, we only saw one small mouth caught in the first six hours, and then it exploded the final two hours. So kind of look for that. Your large mouth guys really rising up the leaderboard and actually Buddy Gross hooked up live right here. Solid, solid keeper right there for Buddy Gross. Real. It's like that last one we lost. Little chunks. This one close to the size of the one he lost. Just about the uh, four. 10, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Solid fish right there for Buddy Gross. The four short and fat and well fed for sure. Our rookie here. Back out to the. Joshua Straysner, one of the only anglers making that shallow water flipping game work like Bill Lowen. And really, those two anglers not fishing very far apart today within a couple miles. Still looking for his first keeper. Nineteen thirteen on day one. I think that one's going to keep. We did see a lot of fish that size yeah. caught in those main lake pockets yesterday. Guys like Greg Hackney, Steve Kennedy for a while. Strasner only catching seven keepers on day one. Sounded like he was the most concerned of all of our anglers that we have cameras with today. Yeah, we went to him early and he was saying, you know, this is just not, it's not where I've, I've got to find more places that look like this place. So it's, it's like he's reinforcing the fact that it's all about timing, hitting the right place at the right moment. 
see how much water's back in those bushes and sawgrass. Sweet beaver strikes again. Keep her. I want her to hurry up and start getting bigger here in a minute. Two pounds. They get it, getting this dirtier water. They, when you get a bite, they get it. Clear water, they don't. They can try to flip something a lot smaller and di different color, I guess. Straysner, certainly one of our outstanding rookies here. The biggest noise made by oh, a rookie yeah. so far this year was at our very first event. The rookie Brian New from North Carolina winning that one on the St. Johns River. Good crop of rookies this year, no doubt about it. Think about that. That was uh, quite a display. <laughs> he put on a show of power there for a newcomer to the Bassmaster Elite Series. And uh, I yeah. think this is going to be it, Z, our marathon peak performance. First stop of the year, St. John's River, Brian New. No doubt about it, really coming into that final day. You know what? We were learning who Brian New was and, and an unbelievable performance last year on the Bassmaster Open Series. Well, came out firing St. John's River, said, hey, I don't have to worry for the rest of the year. I got a pile of money and I don't have to worry about bills. The other thing, really watching how, you know, he attacked day one here on Pickwick, you just watch how he fishes very by the seat of his pants, really fishes what looks good in front of him. I know you talked to him after his first big day and he outlined some modest goals he had yes. for the year, right? He did, Tommy. Looking at your marathon peak performance, Brian New said, I am here to win Rookie of the Year, Angler of the Year, and the Classic. Well, he backed it up in the first <laughs> tournament. Currently standing number third in Bassmaster, Angler of the Year points, North Carolina's Brian New. Man, what a, what a start to an elite career. He also said he was going to win the World Series, the Super Bowl, <laughs> and March Madness. <laughs> what, no Wimbledon? To Caleb. No. Okay. Sorry. Back out to Caleb Sumrall, Bassmaster. Alive. And Caleb Sumrall back at our, and well, close to our launch, Farland Park here. Yep. Been a lot of bass caught there the last 24 years <laughs> and hours. Mm hmm. You know, and you, you, I've been, I've really been looking at our maps today of all of our anglers. Taking a look at some all right here, hooked up. Get this party started, baby. Kind of what you're seeing in that region of McFarland Park. By any means, but it's a start to the day. To the tail race. There's a lot of desperation mixed in with a lot of your top 10 anglers in this tournament. A lot of guys that absolutely bombed on day number one. They are all within about two miles of McFarland. Mm -hmm. The buddy grows. Start of the day in third. He's back down to fourth right now. One of those guys who bombed Scott Canterbury, our 2019 Angler of the Year, has a five pounder. He's jumped from 90th inside the 70s, He's looking to make the cut. It's valuable points. Excuse me, buddy. Started the day in second place, not third. Stay down, you little son of a gun. When it looks like Buddy Gross is fishing a lot deeper water, it's actually not a lot of these fish on the soft current, the back current oh side of a... Ay, 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 ay. Another. 
was a big one, man. Five pounder. That was a really good one. Phew. Mm. Plagued by that. Yesterday it hurt him. It hurt him today. He won't lament the one that got away, maybe the three, the four, the five Oof. that got away. Pile up, let's get back in. Chris Zaldane, 21 pounds, two ounces yesterday. Catching up to do today. Yeah, here's a little update. Um, 8:45. Uh, I tried to start on my spot there, and, and there were, I think three people started right there. They're still there. And I was having a cast over Paul Mueller's head to, you know, to make that cast from yesterday. And uh, I did have some bigger bites, like down this drift right here. So I, start, I said, forget about that. I didn't want to battle it out with those guys. And I started drifting down this seam right here. I think two of my bigger bites came, you know, back away from that main current source. So it was kind of like a secondary break back in here. So I'm just kind of marking like all these little rock piles here on my 360. And I've, there's like three or four of them right here. And underwater, they're really breaking current. So in my mind, if I get that swim bait to swim just perfectly underneath those, you know, over the top of those rocks that are underneath the water, we're in good shape, but uh, you know, yesterday I think we only had one by this time, and it really starts to pick up like after 10 o'clock. Um, I'm not seeing as many drum caught like those guys were. Were those guys? I started there yesterday, and I was catching drum like every other cast. They're either not using the right swim bait or not making the right cast. But I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's drum and stripers loaded up there. But seems like they, they bite in the morning and the smallmouth bite late but i'm just casting in some ripping current here there's a nice seam so we'll stick with this for another 20 to 30 minutes and i'll go to my secondary spot which happened to be my primary spot from practice so kind of excited about that there's just i mean there's way too many guys like on top of them <laughs> Well, you can see that place has really filled up through the course of the day. He had a, that little spot up there that he was pointing to by himself. But Chris Saldane, man, three second place finishes in 2019, but a guy who knows he's very proud just to be here. You know, to to wear that shield right there, um, it's it's something to be proud of. Um, to me, it's it's heritage. Um, but I know what that shield means. It it means to you know protect the sport. It means it means heritage. It means passion, um, and it means a career path from start to finish. Whether you're a young teenager like I was, or a seasoned vet. It just, it stands for something. And I think until you get there, you really don't fully understand what that bass shield means. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Live coverage of this third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series coming this way. And, hey, we're going to have our Seaguar rookie watch here. And Mark Zona, would you pick up the baton on this one and sort of lay out the guys that we've got? We, it, it's a little too early to say it's the year of the rookie, but it sure started out that way. Tommy, it's fair to say your guy Brian knew since day one that this season started, but quietly rising up that leaderboard, Justin Hamner. And our own, you know, Ronnie Moore covers the Bassmaster Opens. He has screamed Joshua Straysner since <laughs> the first minute of competition this year. Joshua Straysner, great, great start for him as well. Went top 20 to St. John's River. He's eighth angler of the year points. Man, that's a, that's a strong rookie showing already this season. He's yeah. right here in his home state and doing well again. A little main river pocket fishing right now. 
Got to see a lot of fish caught exactly where he's at right here. Joshua Straysner, the one thing I got to learn talking to him a couple times now, Tommy, he is all business. There are no fun and games, my friend. Taking a look at that shallow water sawgrass. So many tournaments here on Pickwick Lake in years past. A lot of tournament tournaments dominated when it starts to flood up into these little Ooh. pockets. You got another rookie, Pat Schlapper, our Bass Nation champion here in uh -huh. November. Had a 4-6 recently. He's up to uh, nine and a half on the day in 12th place climbing. Joshua Straysner they using might get a lot bigger. Reaction Innovation Sweet I'll, I'll Beaver. Start with it, though. Back, Pat, back down to Buddy Gross right now. Just lost a really big quality fish. Second big one we've seen Buddy Gross lose in the last day. Four fish in his live well. One quality fish. Looks like fish number five, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it is time to stand down and tighten up Tommy Sanders. Mm. By the way, my friend, a little bit late, but happy St. Patrick's Day, Day Tommy Sanders. Thank you. Thank Taking you a that. look at it. You're, it. you're very welcome. You know, we don't like to do this on the Power Pole Replay of the Day. Buddy Gross on day number one, losing one between six and seven pounds. Yeah, you heard me right, friend. And earlier today, losing a fish that he would estimate right around. And that one right there is just a keeper. Okay, everything in his live well was about that size. But losing this one, which looks to be about another five pounder where, man, in a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament, you talk about execution, losing a six and losing a five today. Hate to say it. Tommy, that's the power pole replay of the day? Question mark? Hashtag? <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's bittersweet, the power pole replay of the day. Right, and the only thing really Buddy Gross, with so much knowledge of the Tennessee River, said he does not have a lot of areas for this tournament. Mm. Needs to maximize what bites. That has not happened so far here on day number two. Going to get back out to Cogar Island with Bill Lowe and with one big one in his live well, two keepers total. Yeah, that little spot right there was pretty juicy yesterday. Tommy, how many fish have we seen caught in that 10-yard stretch this week by other <laughs> anglers? I'm serious. Uh, maybe 11. <laughs> like there has been two or three limits on camera off that exact cast that Lowen just made. Three and a half limits. Yeah. That spot was juicy. Woo! See how shallow he was? 
I mean, right there, prime example of this rising water. You know, it's only been three or four days, um, and these fish have already come all the way to the hill. Big fat girl right there. Woo! I felt gunk, and I thought, man, was that a bite? And it was, yep, that's a bite. That is a bite. Yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to make sure she was sitting on it before I crossed her lips. All right. Having a time. Mm -hmm. Big females showing up shallow. Man, oh man, that can only mean good news for what's happening out here. Look at this one right here. The spot he described is so juicy, and and you backed it up. I mean, it's got a yes. it's got a history. I think we've seen ten good ones caught off of that from three different anglers right now throughout this turn. You think somebody would just sit there? <laughs> well, Bill Lowen has been with the Bassmaster Elite Series since the beginning, since 2006, and each and every year he's out for for maximum fun. You know, I think bass fishing is one of the most exciting sports that there is because it doesn't matter what your age level is. I mean, if you're a, a young kid, 10, 12, you know, like my son is, it's just absolutely ate up with it. All the way to a guy like Rick Clun that's 75 or 78 years old. I don't know how old Rick Clun is, but this is truly a sport where it doesn't matter your age, you can, you can make a career of this. And uh, I mean, how awesome it is. You can see right here, we're in the campground. My wife and my kids travel with me. My kids are homeschooled. Um, what other career could you have where you can travel the country and spend quality time with your kids um, in the outdoors? Um, and to me, that's, uh, that's what it's all about. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. 100 anglers out there trying to make it into the top 50 today. One of them had a great day yesterday. Bill Lowen started the day in third place, went real shallow on us, Mark Zone, and caught a good one. You know, and really the difference, Tommy, we've seen so many of those smaller, those male buck bass caught way up in pockets from Joshua Straysner, Greg Hackney. We were waiting for bigger females to come shallow, and here is the biggest difference. Looking at where Bill Lowen is at, a lot closer to the main river where some of those bigger females pulling up making the exact cast that we have seen so many times the last 24 hours and that exact patch of sawgrass bill lowen one of the nicest guys on the bassmaster elite series looking for his first elite series victory so close so many times regular season classics. so many times yeah the master of tough conditions, river fishing. Here we go. Keep on trucking. See how fat they are? Look at that. Pretty, pretty. We're getting closer. Those two keep your getting closer. Straight. What do you think that was? Another down in here getting getting bites. I mean, only fish for uh, like an hour more. and 30, 40 minutes. Had three hit it, two hit it good, and then caught a short. Big. It's coming at me. Gosh dang. Yeah. <sighs> Told you he was going to bite here. Mm. I told you that's why you throw a trailer hook. They don't want it. You see that? Trailer hook. Barely got it. Two and a half. It's got to keep chunking, baby. I told you we we're going to make our loop. We were going to catch Boy, one. One of the regions of this lake, really from the Trace Bridge upstream, about four miles, starting to turn on. A lot of local tournaments dominated here the last, call it, 60 days, and it was. It was a failure for a lot of our field yesterday, really Pipkins and Moen 
showed out the most, but starting to turn on again here on day two. What's that? Well, nine o'clock. I got, you know, four in the boat, which is more fish than I had in the boat yesterday at nine o'clock, so I that's a good thing. I catch one here. I knew it. Um, I've only caught one big one though, so you know, I had quite a few bites. And, but we're gonna work on it. And the water seems like it might have gotten a little dirtier up here since yesterday, I think. Um, that and it's dropped a little bit too. The current's a little different right here than what it was yesterday. So it might have repositioned the fish just a bit. The bad thing is there's so many trees in my way, I may not be able to get to where they're at. Um, but I, I think the sun has a lot to do with it too. So, you know, the sun's come out a lot earlier today than it did yesterday. So maybe. Keep. Oh, yes. Yeah, 17 incher. Two pounder. That's a real two pounder. I was calling four two pounders yesterday. Keeper for Chris Zaldane. Uh, just a two pounder, but like I said, it gets better throughout the day. Once again, the boats are stacked up. Like yesterday, me and Caleb Summerall were the only ones bouncing around here. And one, two, three, four. Kobe Krieger's up there, though. I mean, he's leading the derb. But again, I'm trying to cast over another boat to make that cast. You know, same cast from yesterday. It's not fun, but I know no one else is throwing this kind of swim bait, so. Got a little bit of an edge. Not as much That's current today. A mega bass okay. freestyle. I don't know. I think it had them pushed up in this stuff yesterday, and it seems like today they've slid way up on the bank for some reason. All right. It's amazing it's been, seeing uh, Zelda and fun so far, as Krieger. you can see. I'm fishing Main River Banks. Um, you know, like I said earlier this morning, that's a big community hole area out here. It's typically got a lot of grass, and I feel like with this rising water, it just pushed them in here. Um, I've been have, having a good start. I got two that I think are close to five, um, and then two other decent keepers. Um, I'm just not getting a lot of bites. You know, I've, I got to keep bouncing around and get bites, but it seems like when I get a bite, it's them big ones, the ones you need. Um, so I'm just going up through here, you know, using these trees and stuff as current breaks, pitching my uh, signature series lure parts online, flipping jig and a 3 8 um, black and blue, or actually black flash. It's got some blue tinsel in it. Uh, I got a chunk on here. And why I go with a 3 8 is so I can float it through this cover in that current. Um, I want it to look as natural as possible. And I feel like with a heavy jig, when it goes in down and sticks in the bottom, it just doesn't look too natural. So I like to float that jig through that cover um, that's exactly what I'm doing. So we're just going to keep grinding. Hopefully I can get three more of the good bites that I need and, uh, keep myself in this thing. Good thing is I think we got enough to go tomorrow already. Um, so now we can just relax and go try to catch some big ones. This whole stretch right here on the back side of this island has been really good, um, for the right kind of bites. Like I said, I'm not getting a ton of bites. Um, they just seem like when I get a bite, it's a big one. Bill Lowen super gonna, consistent this morning. Gonna head right down from actually Bill Lowen right now. Buddy Gross, limit in his live well, lost one big one here about 30 minutes ago. Started the day in second place, he's hooked up now. Every time you sit down, it happens, don't it? Man, and this is a small point. 
the point he's throwing at very, very small. And it seems like about every 45 minutes it reloads. I'd like to have just a 16 inch just so I can get rid of that one. Quit it. He's longer than that other one. I'm just going to swap him out and be done with it. He might not weigh more, but I'm going to. I didn't get Oh yeah. I guess a half pound upgrade. We can legitimately go to 10 now. Had a gross of a couple of six pounders yesterday. That size is uh, yet to show up in force the way it did. Oh, a little bit later this time yesterday. So uh, still a good outlook for Buddy Gross, the man from Chickamauga. Scott Martin making a big move up the leaderboard. Biggest move of all, still Brandon Polinick from outside the top 10 into second place. Plenty more to come. We will be right back. <laughs> Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Well, today, the best season ever continues on Fox's NASCAR Cup Series rolls into Atlanta where every turn is its own test. You can catch all the action with the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 at 3 Eastern on Fox and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Tommy, that's an aggressive track. Who do you have later today, I friend? Think it's such a beast. I, I'm not smart enough to figure out Atlanta. Atlanta is, is a handful. I'm still, I'm still searching. I, think I it, know your heart leans with Kevin Harvick, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell you, I watched last week's race. Our guy, we called it Martin Truex with a big victory. Yeah. Boy, jo Joey Logano is running fast lately. We will have our eyes on Joey Logano and all the rest. Is he, I'll, throw out, a, I'll out throw out a Chase Elliott for you today. Okay. Hmm. But look at the line of boats in front of Zell. And here's the thing. That is just what goes on below that dam. Tommy, fair to say every day of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here's one thing that did stun me. Ron, get ready for this. Talking to a lot of the guys that were fishing up there that we have cameras on today, they said there was zero local pressure from local anglers. I mean, it's one. This is the busiest guide week weeks of the year when you know march on pickwick and a lot of those guides they start in the morning and do half day trips up to the tail race come back drop a trip off go right back there was no local traffic yesterday surprising that's awesome i know i've messaged back and forth with a couple of my buddies cody harrison's a guide there he's fished college against me when we were there he was at north alabama and spent a lot of his time the last week at wilson so they, they wouldn't be in the way of the anglers at Pickwick. Mm. So I know a lot of those guys get it. Um, it is their livelihood, but I do know a lot do their best. Hey, Tom. Yes, Tom, how about, a, how about a big fish alert? Not to upstage the one Such. Right. How about a Hank Cherry with a seven and a half uh -huh. pounder? <laughs> oh, no. Big fish of the tournament. Phoenix big bass of the tournament so far. Wow. Well, that's taking slide back down lake right now towards the trace bridge <laughs> bill lowen with a big morning two big ones in his life well believe he's up to four fish looking for his fifth limit fish just slow and steady for bill lowen so far today It's amazing. Look at the at the guys below the Wilson Dam and Bill Lowen saying there's not as much current today. Gosh. Oof. Ooh. Yuck. I don't like losing them. I don't like losing them. That's a good one, too. I didn't do anything wrong. She just come off. She just come off.
<laughs> Good solid season for Bill Lowen to get to 16th. Bassmaster I think that's exactly where I caught that four pounder yesterday. This loss is bigger than that. Better check him. <coughs> Same exact cast. I mean, this fish right here is, look at this, barely a keeper. I'm talking about and a chunk. wrench over, but just look how fat he is. Just tells you how healthy Lake Pickwick is right now. All right. Hard part's done. Boy, it shows how grouped up these fish get in that current. Loses Got one. She had me all two casts later, up in catches there. a keeper. Mm. I had visions that were coming off. I was like, no, no, please. I just closed my eyes. Like, I don't even want to see if she comes off. All right, let's take it out to our rookie. Brian New won the first event of the season. He's hooked up live, and that looks like a keeper there. Well, you're starting to see a turn on on Pickwick. And right around the corner from Buddy Gross. Going to get back up to Joshua Straysner live. That fish for Bill Lowen put him in his second just past Hank Cherries, who jumped up there with the 7-7, uh, seven, seven, had 19 pounds for Cherry today. So that's the top three behind Kobe Krieger. Strasner with three in the live well. No big size come his way as yet. A good day yesterday, 19 plus. No fat one. I think that's 15. Mm -hmm. They might bite out on the river today. They do that, I can cover a lot more water. How many is that? Four. When you get five, I'll sit down and weigh them. That's a two and a half. Please let this river stuff work. make something happen like that that stuff will work has to be bigger than a pound and a half for the coal looks like it god dang seen a lot more fish catches earlier today you're seeing that you know a lot of your leaders really starting to dial in from having those two days postponed kind of whittling down the areas that they're fishing the only thing watching low in it's not a big stretch that he's fishing and we've talked about it that stretch that he's fishing is getting a lot of other pressure at least throughout the day to where you start to ask yourself going into semifinal monday and possibly championship tuesday can this keep reloading? Be a lot of pressure off tomorrow as we lose half the field. 
uh, with our cut, which is going to benefit some guys. Straysner hooked up again. That'd be number five. Got a hot tree. Boy, Ronnie, you you covered this rookie on the Bassmaster Opens. Got to talk with Tom Sanders about it earlier today. He is all business. Oh yeah. I mean, serious. My rookie of the year pick. We'll see. Yeah, we that's got right. three yes, rookie sir. of the years in the top ten right now in the Angler of the Year race. One of those being Brian New, our first winner. Josh Straysner, the other one, and the other one, Justin Hamner, which is his birthday today. Those three at the top of the Rookie of the Year race. There's the top of our leaderboard right now with Kobe Krieger bubbling under the top ten. The likes of David Mullins first time showing up this high. Ray Hanselman and Brandon Lester. So a couple of Tennessee River guys and more when we come back. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of Bassmaster Elite Series. 100 anglers full field out there jockeying for the top 50 spots because only the top 50 will advance to day three competition. We're bringing it to you live day two from the Bassmaster lead at Pickwick Lake right there. People moving out, people moving in to that top 10, Mark Zona. Tommy Sanders, I'm going to look at that aerial right there and go that that is footage from earlier this week before all that rain came to Pickwick. But we're starting to see some really big shifts on the leaderboard and one of those well, your past Bassmaster Classic, your reigning mm -hmm. Bassmaster Classic champion, he is going to be the Mercury move of the day. And Tommy Sanders, we talked early today, early yesterday, that this tournament was going to be about timing and seeing flurries. All of this current really con kind of congregating these fish together. Well, looking at Hank Cherry's day, anchored right now with, yeah, that's right, a seven and a half pound. Ooh. And if you looked at Clark Wendell yesterday, that is what it takes to rise up the leaderboard. And as we said, flurries, pockets of fish that are grouped up together. Look at that pocket to your right, those fish catches, those little icons. Hank Cherry doing damage early this morning with a lot of room to grow. That is your Mercury move of the day. 34th to third. We were pretty vocal about it this morning. It's going to be a lot of volatility, a lot of movement up and down that leaderboard, and we are far from done with that yet, too. But one Boy, thing did you see changed. how congregated those fish catches were oh, on that map? Right, right. Bang, bang, bang. Right down the bank. That is ex exactly what we saw on day one here on Pickwick. Back to your leader, Kobe Krieger, below the Wilson Dam tail race. Come on, Biggin. Number five here, boys. Give me number five. Z, when these guys go back to their rooms at the end of the night, do you think they still bob up and down in the bed when they're trying to get some rest from sitting in the Man, that is the most. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, you have been below that dam. And for anybody watching on FS1 that's not been, that is the most. I mean, it messes with your mind. Number one, it is so loud so intimidating just to look at but it's just it's monotonous because it's all day long you're getting battered chris zaldane fishing very close to another boat right there. <laughs> and look that's one of the problems in this event is it, it's not like everybody's catching them up there krieger caught him zaldane caught him hi chris oh, um, no, no, no. The, there, there's a lot of other anglers up there that I, I hate to put it this way that did not catch him on day one that are just in the way you, you've mm -hmm. kind of heard Zaldane talk about that they're they're sitting on top of the fish hi Chris he's trying to motion to the uh, the boat ahead of him to actually go the other way than the way it's going right, right. now yeah hey move <laughs> I but see. really looking at Zaldane, you see that that real slick water next to the rapids. That was his key cast yesterday. A little bit softer current. I mean, there, look, there's current everywhere. But the whole thing, you see the bubbles on the right are those seams 
that those smallmouth could sit behind those boulders and ambush. I heard you talk about it earlier today, Ron, how he perfectly weights that mega bass freestyle swim bait, a three quarter ounce and a one ounce, and almost wanting it just to barely hit those boulders, not wanting it to be two or three feet above those boulders. You know, he's in about 10 to 15 feet of water to where it almost just flushes naturally with that current similar to what Bill Owens talking about flipping shallow down the lake, but totally different at the same time where it's just a more natural presentation. Again, this is the famous Muscle Shoals from back before they even had lakes here. It uh, sort of prevented riverboat traffic on the Tennessee for until they built the dams. Here's our hummingbird bird's eye view of this place. The Horseshoe, big rocky shoal, the, the main rapids on the Tennessee River. Gosh, I remember the first time I went up to that dam, I was, I was in my late teens, early 20s. And when you go up there and that water is opened up like it is right there, looking at that hummingbird bird's eye view, it is so incredibly intimidating heading up that way. Z, you wonder what that reminds me of? That reminds me of up in that Maryland, Pennsylvania, the whole parkway as you head up north to get to New York and you cross over the Susquehanna River where you can see the bottom and the only boats that can go up there are jet boats. That's what that looks like from the aerials right. with all the flooded trees and whatnot. Yet we have oh, plenty of smallmouth and largemouth waiting for a swim bait to come by. And every other species. Otherwise yeah. known to the locals as the sus. <laughs> Hank Cherry just came across the board as our first unofficial 20 pound bag of the day. He just caught a three and a quarter to call out one of his two and a half. So you said that Z on the Mercury move of the day that he has plenty of room to grow. He had two, two and a half pounders. He's gotten rid of one of oh them now, gosh. over 20 pounds and still in third place. Hey, but this is the time yesterday that Zaldane and Krieger started to rise up the leaderboard. We talked about it a little earlier, Ron, when you were doing the live mix. The largemouth guys seem, seem to knock their lights out early. And as the sun got higher yesterday on day one is when the smallmouth guys rose up the leaderboard. And the other thing, Tommy, we didn't talk about this today. We saw Steve Kennedy in pockets with Greg Hackney until one o'clock yesterday. He had one bass, uh. came up to the tail race. We went offline and he weighed in and had 19 pounds. Kennedy caught that 19 pounds yesterday just below the dam, literally in like 45, 45 to, yeah. to yeah. 50 minutes. It happened so fast in this place. It was noted yesterday, away, and how many guys said that they left them biting yesterday. Those late flight anglers, a couple of yes. our biggest bags came from the guys who had maybe an extra 30 minutes to 45 minutes, maybe an hour extra fishing time, and they said they left them biting, and they're trying to pick up where they left off early this morning. You know, and really listening to Chris talk about all those other anglers in the area was he thought maybe that they would get frustrated. And there has not been a ton of fish catches there today that these other anglers might get frustrated like they did on day one and abandon this tail race to where he kind of had that one current scene, that one little current pocket that he's in kind of all to himself later today, like he did on day one. Well, this is the exact position he spent most of yesterday in. And he's doing what he loves to do. I mean, last a one year ago, he was working that calculus with his swim bait, the, the current, the wind and everything with a chance yes. to win the classic. And it just didn't yes. work out on the final day. But boy, he's if he's got a chance to do that. He's the guy that's going to do that. Another key for our hardcore viewers watching this. Zaldane is a master at swim baiting, whether it's shallow, deeper, fishing finesse swim baits, big ones like he is here. He said line was key. You needed heavy line, but not too heavy a line. He's using 17 pound of his X and he, it, Ron, this is really cool. He said he wants to use 20 pound line, but that 20 pound line will not let that bait get down closer to those boulders in 10 to 15 feet of water. 
it just is a bigger diameter, so it just hangs in that current right. a little bit more and floats that bait higher. Is that what you're meaning, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's Aldane originally from Southern California. Kobe Krieger, a Michiana guy like you, Mark Zona. No, he is, isn't he? <laughs> working, working it for everything it's worth. This uh, magic horseshoe here, this tail race of the Wilson Dam, Kobe Krieger. Doing great work this morning, hanging on to that lead. Tough thing to do, as volatile as things are here. Bill Lowen up into second place in the big leap, 34th to third. A reigning classic champ, Hank Cherry. So many terrific stories working this morning. We got more on the way. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Saturday, April 3rd, MLB is back as the Braves face Bryce Harper and the Phillies. Then, the reigning champion Dodgers take on the Rockies all on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Here on this first day of spring 2021 and one of the most awaited rites of spring is just around the corner. Oh, the world looks nice on this Sunday. We are having a great day on the water live with you, bringing you this coverage. The second day of competition Guaranteed rate bass master elite and Chris Elding hooked oh. up the slot. Yeah. That's just a three pounder. Or less. That's yeah, a little guy. Two and three quarter. Sal Dane looks like that small mouth ate it pretty zestily right there as we take you back down, down river Pickwick to Buddy Gross yet again. Spent a lot of time in the boat with Buddy yesterday and today. Chris seemed, made pretty it seem amazing. like it was inconsequential, but number two is still so huge for him because yes. there's no guarantee to catch five this week. Four fifteen. It was pretty today. amazing though. A lot of those boats get out of that oh, area sorry. and Zeldane instantly catches one. <laughs> yeah. Buddy Gross hooked up. Boy, you don't know by his mannerisms. I was to say, how do you know? How do you know? But <laughs> he's hooked up. Z, did you get to ask him on the phone last night why he does set Just the hook so that, soft man. and point the rod towards? I did not. Towards? I was more concerned what the spot looked like. Okay, cool. Oh no. Oh. Ooh. Oh boy. Ooh. 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 Not good. He paid me back. Hey, Tommy, what do you say we take a ride throughout Pickwood right here and take a look at all of oh, our catches from yeah. the Wilson Dam nice. as we head down towards Coffee Slough? A lot of fish being caught in those pockets a lot you know just solid quality not the giants though that we expect with the rising water a pile of fish catches earlier today around Coger island and i ask you young ron moore do you find it kind of surprising how many fish catches and leaders that have caught fish well really on the west side of the trace bridge i have how about your yamaha midday report well, it has been all across the board. Chad Pipkins just upriver from Coger Island doing a lot of work earlier today yeah. with a bladed jig. Not a lot of bites, but the quality has been there. That's one. Good day yesterday for Chad Pipkins. 21 pounds and two yeah. ounces to start this day in fourth place. Actually tied for fourth place. With Chris Saldane in the belt, baby. Boom. It's coming at me. Gosh, I really man. did think, Z, coming into this event, that this Coger Island region from here to the Trace Bridge oh, would be a factor, but I didn't think from the Trace Bridge to Waterloo so much because of how low the water yes. is. Now that it's came up, all those shallow bars and flats, those places that were dry, now are the places where the fish want to be and are going. Well, one of the anglers that has found one of those shallow bars 
west of the bridge, downstream of that bridge. Buddy Gross actually marking this point, oh, waypointing this yeah. little, very, very yeah. subtle yeah. point, a stop sign before a spawning pocket. Said he never made a cast here during practice. Well, he has pretty much unloaded on him so far here and a little bit more company there today, but it doesn't seem like Buddy Gross is gonna leave anytime soon. No, really, we're just getting to the time of day when he scored big. In this exact spot yesterday could, uh, could really ignite for him big fish-wise later on today. You know, and kind of rewinding, Ronnie, something that Tommy and I were talking about earlier today, it is almost a carbon copy of yesterday. The largemouth anglers, guys that are really just targeting largemouth weather on the main river, like Buddy Gross or Bill Lowen, just off of the main river. It almost seems like your largemouth fishermen doing damage early, and then you start to see those guys that are really just targeting smallmouth later in the day rising up the leader. Yeah. That's the way to start the morning. Woo! Bill Lowen using a 3 8 ounce signature lure parts online jig, a very light jig, plastic chunk trailer. We're going to make it. Cut that thing. Very, open. very slow and methodical. And the one thing, if you kind of look at the guys that have, have performed well on the largemouth, they kind of get to their areas and they bunker yeah. in. Not a lot of running around at all, just saturating everything that's in that front of them. that spot was juicy. Bill Lewin, 21 pounds, three ounces. Great day yesterday Woo. to third place, solo third place. And hold and serve today. Man, staying right there, and that is not easy to do. Things are moving fast here on Pickwick. You said it, Z, those flurries, those windows of opportunity for the guys who are catching largemouth early in the morning. We saw Scott Martin, Brandon Lester yesterday morning. Then that midday portion, Buddy Gross got on a roll. And then Zal, Dane, and Kennedy were the smallmouth guys. And Krieger at the end of the day. We will see what that does today. But Lowen definitely one of the guys early for the largemouth that are on a roll. Kobe Krieger now. 25 yeah. pounds, 12 ounces yesterday. And really, Kobe Krieger way ahead of schedule from where he was. Yesterday at this time, Kobe only had one bass. Now, don't get me wrong. It was a good one. It was a six and a half pound smallmouth, but he only had one fish in his live well by about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and then absolutely knocked their lights out. So Kobe with that good smallmouth right there, really ahead of schedule from day to day. totally committed to this area. I mean, I don't hear any rumblings in his boat about moving anywhere else. He, he knows he can get the job done. Kobe Krieger, a lot of work with it. And here's the thing. Yesterday, he kind of lived with a little homemade flat-sided crankbait and a swim bait. Saw him expand his lures today, cranking, yes. spinner baiting. Bam. But he said as the day wore on yesterday, the biggest ones he caught were on that swim bait late in the afternoon. Well, as we look at our unofficial weights right there, yeah. this is moving day. Remember, you've got to be in the top 50 by the time this day is over. We're a long way from there right now. Kobe Krieger, Hank Cherry, the biggest move of the day upward. Lowen Kennedy up, Schlapper up into the top five. Polnick early on move from outside to inside our top five. Scott Martin has done the same thing in ditto. Tennessee River guy David Mullins. And really looking at that leaderboard, if you've watched the top 20 on, on Bassmaster.com Bass Track, very hostile top 20, kind of bouncing around about every 15 minutes. And as weird as this sounds, you see flurries whenever we go to a tidal river where it's just, you just see the whole river light up. That's eerily similar to what we're seeing in this tournament. Jason Christie made a little move up the leaderboard earlier today, but he hasn't had any action uh, in the last hour and a half or so. Ditto for Seth Fighter, Jake Whitaker, improving his position from yesterday. Big key is to make it into the top 50 for tomorrow. 100 anglers fish yesterday and today. 50 will advance to tomorrow. There's that red cut line right there. And then the top 10 the final day. We saw Hank Cherry, 34th, not far from that cut line, needed to secure a spot. Huge day since we last mentioned him. 
He's up to 21 pounds, two ounces. He's replaced all of his two plus pounders, and now he has three, three and a quarters as his small fish. Mark Menendez, kind of a local here from not far away, one of the favorites coming in. Uh, he's got to get some work done today if he wants to fish on day number three. Justin Atkins, the overwhelming favorite here. Boy, he's got the same kind of mountain to climb as well. You know, Ron, we actually talked about it yesterday a lot. Some very big names struggling on day one. John Cox, Scott Canterbury. But there was also some familiar names down at the bottom of the standings. We said Bassmaster Elite Series rules. There are going to be cuts oh, at the Bill end of the year. And got, oh, Bill Lowen hooked up live. Yes. <laughs> Look at that big fat pig. <laughs> Oh my lord. Oh, look at that thing. Big old jig in the roof of her mouth. Oh, look at that. Look how fat. Yeah, buddy. Oh my goodness. I pitched it at the base of that tree. And the line went slack like somebody cut it. Did you hear me say, oh my gosh, where? I mean, I, I couldn't find it. Well, I found it. I found it, all right. Oh, oh it's gonna get Lord. rid of a two pounder. That's a big one. Like I said, don't get a lot of bites. But when we do. And Tommy, he's gonna be your unofficial leader. No doubt about wow. that. Replacing a two pounder. Out of that trade for sure, yeah. It's gonna upgrade. That fish kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> Good one, though. Good, solid, large. Three, yeah, three big ones in his live well. Bill Lowen making an important move. We're not even to halfway point in this day yet. The Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha. Toyota, and by Berkeley. Ten years, a decade since the Bassmaster Elite Series has been to this incredibly special place, Pickwick Lake. We have an incredibly special host city as well. The endlessly interesting Florence, Alabama, right here in the Shoals area, and Florence, of course, uh, you know, so much of the history of rock and roll was written around it, around these parts here. It's a friendly city, a great town, bass fishing crazy. And there's the weigh-in coming up in Florence. Starts at 4 p.m. Eastern time today. Dave Mercer on the right there will be uh, leading the festivities there. Here's a shot of our winner from the uh, first event there, Brian New on the left. But the weigh-in starts on Bassmaster.com, 3 Central, 3 local time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> right now, though, the man of the hour. There he is right there, the veteran Bill Lowen. Yeah. That's the way to start Really, Bill water. Lowen, just Woo! slow and steady all day long. Made the comment, if that water stays up and holds its color, these fish will stay near the bank. And pretty much surprisingly, he has been left alone all day long in one of the most popular areas of Pickwick Lake. That was uh, just over the past, oh, about an hour and 45 minutes ago. Well, maybe two or three hours for that first one. All right, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, having a really good start so far. I've got three that are, I think, pushing that five pound class. I got one that may be a little better than five, but I got three really good ones and two that I got to get rid of. But it's early. Um, <clears throat> I'm still out here. You can see fishing main river banks. Um, once again, I mean, I keep harping on, you know, this being a big grass flat out here in one of the popular places on the lake and these fish have just pushed to the bank. Um, and all I'm going to do is going up through here trying to pick them off. Uh, just fishing the way I like to fish, fishing in the current, little current break type stuff. And uh, so far this morning, it's been working out pretty good. Working out pretty good. Bill Lowen from the 
will cut his teeth on the Ohio River, where all this water is headed, actually. There's Kentucky Lake, and then all this water goes into the Ohio River. Bill knows this, this area. Exactly. Very, very used to fishing in dirty water tournaments and really cut his teeth fishing tough bodies of water. You know, catch five bass that way. Oh, the mean, size of mean. that one right there. You know. <laughs> What's scary is that Bill Lowen says, I have yeah, three five pounders, maybe like one bigger. Stuck. He's got two listed as four five and four two. So he's he's at 20 mm. pounds right now because adding about a pound and a half between those two fish, going to put him at 20 pounds. He's unofficially and again, Ron, actually, we were talking about this. One of the nicest guys, Shame you know, you stayed around a little longer, huh? so long on the Elite Series. And we are the most biased, unbiased crew in, in sports. You want to see Bill hold a trophy because really he do. would collapse and start crying instantly. Yeah, he's been so close so many times. Uh, he's acknowledged that. And he said, hey, my career is not defined by if I win an event. It's defined on how long the career is and who I've impacted along the way. And he's had a great career. He's also done something awesome the last two or three years. And every single day he makes a third day cut, which he's going to make today. He gives a Bassmaster membership away to one young kid in the crowd so that they can learn to fish just like he did when he was a kid reading Bassmaster magazine. Young kids are awesome. Yeah. I was one like two years ago. Well, not that long ago, really, <laughs> I'm about to say. Yeah, Bill Lowe on that short list of, of Incredible top shelf off of anglers. A actual tree, you know. You can see this one cypress knee out here all by itself. That's what she was on. You know, and if you kind of go off of his history of tournaments that he's been really close to winning, but. <sighs> Help. They, they've been tournaments Crazy. like, like this I'm catching where the he's... female and then turn right back around and catching the male. Utilize small areas, areas that would replenish for a couple days, but they always seem to run out. And the one thing that Lowen said is, man, I, the water needs to stay up with color and they'll keep coming to me. Yeah, normally we see somebody like Bill Lowen, when he gets around that 20 pound mark, you stop, you stop catching him and you manage them for the next few days. He can't weigh in yeah, he's two two pounders right. and be okay. He knows that and so it's pedal to the metal for Buddy Gross. For him, the guys who are catching him, they're gonna keep catching him until the end of the day when weigh-in starts. Just about out of our allotted time today on FS1. I have certainly enjoyed spending Sunday morning with you and bringing some great live fishing. Uh, if you want to check it out, Bassmaster.com, the place to go to get continued coverage. And don't forget, uh, 4 Eastern, 3 p.m. Central Time this afternoon, the weigh-in begins. Very important weigh-in to decide which 50 anglers will fish on day number three from fantastic, explosive Pickwick Lake. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. <laughs> you got me back <laughs> Oh. Live coverage of the guaranteed rate elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome back to the sunny shores of Pickwick Lake, right here in beautiful Florence, Alabama. This Shoals area, so historic for so, so many reasons, but one of those major reasons is the incredible fishery that is Pickwick Lake. That is our playing field. And Davey Height, Bill Lowen is at the top of that leaderboard right now. And is it too early to say, is it gonna finally happen? <laughs> well, I've certainly been thinking about that. You and I both, Dave, that Bill Lowen has been with the Bassmaster Elites since they started. And he's had a few close calls, a great fisherman, one of the most consistent anglers out there making checks but he has yet to hold that blue trophy over his head. Maybe it will be today. Oh, in two days, excuse me. 
And just on cue, a guy who's going to say something about that, Kobe Krieger pulls up right behind us, uh, just like he did yesterday. And we know the damage that he definitely administered all yesterday afternoon. So it's early in the day, but man, sun shining. This this body of water is always representing, and it did yesterday in the weigh-in. Oh, it absolutely did. And you mentioned sunshine. Kobe Krieger talked about that yesterday. He said, I think the sunshine really helped my bite. A lot of the weight that he weighed in, brought to the scales to you, was in the afternoon. So we've got a lot of fishing left to go today. You know what I'm excited about? I'm excited about our Toyota Midday Report. And it's always exciting when you get to watch it all go down. And one of my favorites always... The most, um, you know, the, the greatest Maine in professional bass fishing. Not Maine, Maine, his hair. Uh, <laughs> Chad Pipkins uh, had a great day yesterday, Davey. He did, and one of the anglers that said, hey, I caught 15, maybe 20 bass yesterday. We didn't hear that from a lot of guys. Uh, the top 10, most of those anglers said, man, I only caught six or seven or maybe eight bass. But he had uh, 15 to 20 keepers. Chad Pipkins doing what he likes to do offshore. Not fishing really deep, using a vibrating jig. Little, little hints, Chad said, that paid off, and they paid off in a big way on the scales. But a guy that everybody talked about coming into this event, Buddy Gross, and with good reason. He's got an FLW win here in the past and showed that he knows what he's doing out here. Yeah, Buddy Gross feels right at home here on the Tennessee River. He said, I don't have a lot of experience here, like you said, but, hey, this is the Tennessee River, and everybody that knows Buddy Gross knows that he loves to fish this river system expansive flats and that's just what he's doing we see bill lowen capitalizing on the shoreline today because of the high water buddy gross is fishing what he said in practice was just dry ground the water came up about seven or eight feet but it is going back down and really should help buddy gross the question with buddy gross is can he overcome those shortcomings yesterday lost a big one and earlier today lost a big one big event like this buddy gross knows those near misses, they can hurt you. Yeah, you, you see right there, looking at that footage of Buddy Gross, he, he knows that you just can't afford to lose multiple fish over five pounds, and that's exactly what he's done. But hey, if anybody can can withstand losing those fish, it is Buddy Gross, because he caught some quality fish yesterday. Buddy Gross had just been on the Elite Series for two years, didn't take him long to take that title, but here's a guy who's been around for a long time and been knocking on that door. Is it time? Yeah, Dave, you know, I, I think everyone has to pull for Bill Lowen a little bit. He's been around so long, a, a great guy, travels with his family. They're always here pulling for him and supporting him and just having a great day today. And he is doing what he loves to do. He's got a jig in his hand, dirty water. He's up on the bank. But we've noticed here, standing at shoreline, the water is falling really quick today. So we'll have to see if that water stabilizes. It'll probably be a good thing for Bill Owen. If it keeps falling, you would think a lot of those fish would be out there where Buddy Gross is fishing. Bill Lowen, of course, an 11-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier and a known river rat. I mean, these are the conditions that you would expect a Bill Lowen to contend. Does that drop in water? Does that hurt him or help him? Well, I think a lot of guys in practice fished offshore and they just have moved up to the shoreline because of the conditions. Uh, Bill Owen will adjust, but to me, the best thing that could happen for him is just for things to stabilize and not be falling as fast as they are. I've kept an eye on it all day today, and it's, it's dropped about four, maybe five inches just in the last few hours. Dollar Bill Lowen, of course, uh, has been knocking at that door for a long, long time. As I said, an 11-time classic qualifier. He is one of the most, uh, the reason I call him Dollar Bill is just because he always makes dollars. I mean, he's one of, he's the guy, if you're a fantasy fishing player and you want that guy that's going to get you points week after week, he is definitely one of those guys. And, and that's why he's been to the classic as many times he has. And so much has to go right, Davey. I mean, you've talked about it. When those victories happen, oh I mean, it, it, it is, and everything has to come together, doesn't it? it? It really does, but but I really think it's setting up perfectly for him. The water falling on some will be great because it'll pull those fish out on the ends of the, of the cover, the, whether it's the hay grass or a, a blowdown or a stump or a tree. Come on. Bassmaster says... <laughs> All right, it's uh, 10 o'clock. Um, had a pretty, really good morning so far. Got three of the right ones, three, you know, I'm just gonna say five pounders um, and two that I need to get rid of. Um, still out here running my main river stuff. It seems like I can get bit out on the main river 
first thing in the morning and as the sun gets up or later on in the day, I switch over to start um, flipping reeds. But the whole deal for me seems to be like concentrating out here on the main river. Um, I don't think a lot of guys are kind of running this pattern. I think since the water's come up and got high, a lot of guys are concentrating um, back in the pockets and things like that. Um, but for me, I'm kind of staying out here using the current to my advantage. Um, I always like when I feel like the fish are getting positioned on something and that's exactly what the current does. It positions them about right where you think they should be and all I'm doing is running around trying to find those what I call high percentage areas um, and so far the last two days it's been working out pretty good. So we're just going to keep at it. Um, yeah, I got to get two more of them right bites and uh, We'll have another really, really good day. Um, but I'm not gonna be greedy. If they give me, if that's all they give me for the rest of the day, I'll be fine with that. But I sure would like to have me two more big ones. Bill Lowen fishing in that dirty water, and it sounds like being joined by some of my Canadian brethren uh, while he's fishing, <laughs> but that dirty water, and the thing that is causing that dirty water, the dam, two totally different uh, techniques, two totally different approaches. Talk to me about it, Davey. Well, a lot of what Bill is doing is these fish are ready to spawn. And, and before the water came up, those fish would spawn out on those flats. They find a piece of cover. Oftentimes it'd be a stump or something like that. But with the water rising, those fish go to the shoreline. And I saw several fish yesterday uh, coming through uh, the check-in and then today one or two of those at Bill Low and they're just ready to spawn. We had so much warm weather uh, just a couple weeks ago and now the water has come up and the water temperature has dropped but those fish are moving up there to those pieces of cover on the shoreline setting up to spawn. We saw Bill Owen uh, about 15 minutes ago catch a big one and then caught the male right after it two fish uh, beside one tree on the other hand you look at Chris Saldane those fish are totally feeding they're they're pre-spawn fish feeding up getting ready for the spawn a little bit later uh, both great effective ways to do well here on Pickwick uh, both ways to, did you see a lot of tournaments won the, th the thing about where these guys are the Chris Saldane you have to have that dynamic rain i guess you should say you know that four or five six inches rain for all this to happen and uh you know the last time the leaks here it happened and and we're back looking at almost the same scenario that chris saldane is doing that a lot of the anglers were doing here 10 years ago so two different approaches one totally pre-spawn feeding up before the spawn and then a lot of the fish that bill lowen are catching i think are moving up there to actually spawn Kobe Krieger, uh, you can't forget about him. I mean, he rolled up to open up our segment, making a little move from this morning and made key adjustments yesterday, uh, Davey, and really felt, sounded pretty confident when I talked to him this morning. Yeah, I, but we saw him do the same thing yesterday. About this time, he came up and fished the shoreline through here. I think just get his confidence and maybe just kind of mentally get refocused, catch a few keepers along here, go back up to the current and, and fish for those bigger smallmouth like he caught this morning and even some largemouth mixed in but you know it, it gets it's a grind up there mentally but to get on the bank and catch small keepers that can just clear your head how important is knowing what he overcame yesterday you know when, when he pulled up here yesterday obviously you know what wasn't doing well at that point he said it himself but to know that it came together that quick, I mean, that has to totally keep you well, in this. I mean, almost still, like no matter what's happened up to this point, it's a new day for from here reason. forward. Yeah, your confidence um, gets better don't know really every why. single day. You know, yesterday I had a, obviously a pretty good law. You know, I had that one forever, but the water's definitely a little dirtier than it was yesterday, which. I don't think that shouldn't have a whole lot to do with it, I wouldn't imagine, but. So we're gonna try to get number five in the box here, and then we're gonna go back up there where some big ones live and see if we can't call out a couple keepers if we happen to get lucky and catch a couple. Um, you know, definitely not as many bites today as yesterday.
As you can see, not traveled real far. You can see our service yard right behind him right now, but let's have a look at his catches and how he started his day. Well, he definitely started it off good there, you see, with, with a crankbait. The key up there is to find the right current seam, find the right spot for slack water, and obviously Kobe Krieger has done that. There was about 15 boats up there this morning, and he had the most success by far. Dave, is it, is it more frustrating for you to cover an event when you're that intimate with the spot? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I would feel that you just, you know, I think it's kind of like your little pet area <laughs> well it is but uh, there's there's thousands of people that it's their pet area that place gets so much pressure but it just for as long as i can remember has produced when you have all that water flowing and look at that i mean the the, the picture really doesn't even do it justice there is a lot of current there obviously here's here's a shot uh, and those fish are that, that water's coming around the front of that island it's just a slack water area that those small mouth and large mouth love to set up in and they're in a feeding mode when they're there you can catch them uh, they, they'll move off and then but when they move right up on those current seams they're ready to eat no doubt how physically and mentally exhausting is it competing in an event in that kind of conditions oh it's it's probably the, the most difficult tournament I ever tried to win I I guess you know the classic uh, is a different level but the most uh, just mentally and physically grueling uh, exhausting event because you know you start and you got 12 boats fishing around you we saw some of that this morning with Chris Aldane and some of the boats Chris Aldane hooked up now um, hopefully it's not a drum Just like I said, it's a drum, <laughs> unfortunately. But that 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 gets to you mentally also because you're gonna you're gonna have to go through drums, striped bass. Uh, you catch a lot of fish, and when you're in need of a nice large mouth or small mouth bass, and you hook up and you think, oh, there it is, and it's a, another drum. But you just got to be all in, committed. And Chris Saldain seems to be that way. But if he fishes all four days, which we all hope he does, he will <laughs> he will remember this week because it, it's really really tough. I think what Kobe's doing is really smart just get away from it for a little while uh, we saw him catch a couple keepers here he said he needs one more for his limit if he catches his fifth fish go back up there uh with just a good attitude you know that five fish in the live well mean it means so so much kind of a fresh perspective yes uh, with with what Zaldane's doing i, I would wonder at some point, you just, I mean, you really have to be locked down mentally just not to let that mental lapse happen, you, you know, because you're catching the, those many fish that don't matter, um, you, you know, and obviously when you know it's that, you, you kind of heave it in, and, and generally that's when it ends up being a giant bass, but Dalnay knows how to handle this situation. Oh, he does, uh, but it's tough. It is, but hey, you don't hold that blue trophy over your head unless you've earned it. Earned it indeed, and someone will here on a rare championship Tuesday, but they got to make it through today. Top 50 move on after day number two, right here at the guaranteed rate, Bassmaster Elite at Lake Pickwick. Welcome back to our beautiful host community here in Florence, Alabama. Beautiful Pickwick Lake, and this is the third stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series, the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Pickwick Lake. And let's have a Skeeter Boats Angler of the Year watch, and look out, the guy who came here with one goal to make it back to the Classic, Craig Hackney is your leader. Tied with Patrick Walters, we saw him have a phenomenal season last year certainly the the grand finale there at lake fork but patrick walters having another good start this year brian new a, a rookie on the bassmaster elite series uh, not far behind not far behind him and showing he is here for good but the guy who got it last year i mean he's won that title four times and just won his first year over at bass he is our reigning and defending angler of the year let's get out in the water with clark wendlett Well, right now I'm struggling to say the least. The, uh, you know, I, I didn't get that many bites yesterday. And I mean, 
you know, it's not like you got time enough to go change or anything. I, I just think I gotta stay with it. See, I've fished now for uh, nearly three hours. I've had two bites. Lock, caught one of them, small keeper, lost the other one. Had, had it on for just a second, so. Um, you know, it's, the only thing I can do is just stay with it. It's, it's the way I think I gotta fish and I'm fishing all new water right now, so. Just gotta get it in front of the right fish. Clark Wendlett, uh, currently in 31st place in this tournament. And uh, I mean, you a long time roommate of yours. You read any body language from him or, or is that even possible? I, I do, but I was able to talk to him yesterday afternoon and uh, he just didn't get a lot of bites yesterday. He had a great, had a great day, he had 20 pounds, had that seven pounder that was uh, yesterday's big fish, but uh, just not a lot of bites. But you have to go back and hope that, hey, if I can get six more bites, just like I did yesterday, I'll be right there where I need to be. And, uh, he's committed, uh, obviously, farther down the lake than a lot of these guys that we've been watching today. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of time. What he's doing, fishing in close to the shoreline, uh, from midway of these docks into the shoreline, a lot of those fish are fish that are moving up to spawn also. So the afternoon is always better for that type of bite. And he's going to stick with it. He's got confidence. And you know, I, I think we'll see him do a lot better. Brian New hooked up live. Hey, big girl. Hey, buddy. What you doing? Hey, pal. Mwah. I lied. I'm gonna make another cast. My biggest smallmouth ever. Five, one. How about that one more cast stuff? Woohoo! Ryan New took the title at our very first event, proving yeah. he's new only by name. He definitely had the game. Let's look back at the St. John's River. Well, he had a, had a great tournament, but he had a great Got final one. day. And what better time to show out and show the whole world you're here to stay on the Bassmaster Elites. Brian New, uh, we all knew would be here for a long time. Had a great season last year on the Opens, uh, finished yeah. points leader. Yeah. Uh, but then I was able, Ashley and I were right there in a boat 50 yards from him on that final day, and he really had it dialed in. So many anglers fished the same stretch that he won the event on, but they just yeah. didn't have it dialed in like Brian knew. Yeah. Quite often, yeah. rookies will come into the Elite Series and talk about, you know, just wanting to make the classic, just want to, he wants to win it all. Literally an incredible history, you know, whether it be as a co-angler or on the front of the boat, an incredible history. Didn't take him long to win that title, but he's not done. He wants to win not just Rookie of the Year, but Angler of the Year and the Bassmaster Classic. Well, you need to come out here with goals and you, you need to trust yourself and have confidence in yourself. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. And he has confidence in himself, but he should because he has he's gotten it done. He earned his way to the Bassmaster Leach through the Opens. And, and if it happens, when you get here happens, through that route, gives you, me, I'm gonna be you know you've earned it, no with, doubt about it. Fishing against two, three hundred people each and every event, fish both divisions I mean, and finish the top of like, the, the leaderboard you know, as far as fishing, points for the season. I mean, uh, I weighed in my one smallmouth off of a bridge yesterday. Pretty sure I'm gonna weigh in at least one smallmouth on a bridge today. If I don't, we've done some work, but. I mean, still junk fishing, but just current break stuff. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's this much current. You gotta, you gotta be fishing some sort of current break. And I kind of feel like overall the fishing's gonna be a little tougher. But I was just thinking in my head a second ago, like I think the guys that that found like the where they're sitting up up there at the tail race and and in that area, I think those are the guys that are really gonna catch them again today. Um, but, uh, I mean, cause they just found out, you know, with this current and this, how high the water is, they found out where the spot is. 
because I'm sure that I'm not a tail race expert by any means. I've done it like 35 minutes in my life and caught a catfish, a gar, and a drum doing it. So I know nothing about it, but uh, I feel like, you know, with obviously with the current, when the current changes and when uh, the water rises, they use different places. I mean, it's, they've got to. Um, so I feel like those guys probably got dialed in. Oh, I think that was a rock, but it felt good. <laughs> but I'm just throwing a, uh, it's actually a prototype from Z-Man that a buddy of mine gave me named Brian Thrift. Actually, he didn't give it to me. I kind of stole it from him. Sorry, buddy. But <laughs> um, I borrowed it without asking. Uh, but it's a big bladed chatterbait. It's just a bigger blade. It's, um, I took the blade, I put it on a jack, a three quarter ounce jackhammer head and, and I'm using a Zoom Z crawl as my trailer and throw it on 20 pound Sunline shooter, seven foot, three inch heavy action Fitzgerald rod and a, a seven to one Abu Garcia Revo STX. And for that, for that bigger, heavier chatterbait, that rod and line and everything real set up is, is the deal. Um, I'm not really catching them, but I'm fishing efficiently. Uh, hopefully I can catch me another big brownie here in a minute. I'll take a big greenie too. They pay the same, but the brown ones are funner. I'm a North Carolina red. Uh, catching any fish is funner to me. I mean, but Brian knew one of the reasons that he is as good as he is is because he spent an incredible amount of time in the back of the boat. I mean, he mentioned Brian Thrift used to travel with him on tour, but but figured out how to catch them, not just behind them boat-wise, but literally on the back of pros' boats. So learned how to make those adaptations, and you definitely see all that time in the back of the boat is paying off in the front of the boat now. Oh, it does. I mean, the, the Marshall program that we have here in the elites, you can learn so much by being in the boat with the best in the business. And, and a lot of the anglers uh, through the years, especially the younger ones now, spend a lot of time in the back of the boat uh, of the best fishermen in the world. Jump up and join Clark Wendlet now. And uh, oh, Clark Wendlet, of course, yeah. once again, our reigning and got defending it. angler of the year, hooked up live. Little guy. Missed it the first time. Don't yeah, know if that's going to be a Just a little 14 incher, I think. Missed it the first time, got it the second time. Fourteen and a half. Some large mouth, small mouth, and spotted bass good. have to be fifteen inches. That one not quite legal length. He mentioned it, missed it the first time. Is that just is that a time of year or is that a color of the water? Gosh, thing? it could be anything. But here's what came across my mind: when these fish are spawning, it could have been a different fish paired up and he obviously caught the small one it could have been the female that bit first i mean i've seen it happen before we saw bill lowen catch a big fish and then throw back in there and catch a smaller fish so, but hopefully for clark that was the same fish it just just missed that bait and came back make a move up the lake now and join ourselves our tournament leader i believe as of day number one kobe krieger and as you can see not far from us where we're standing right here right now, Davey. And uh, you said that's a good thing, getting fresh perspective. I mean, and definitely put some weight in the boat in this yeah. area as well. You know, I didn't do that here. I stayed up there in the tail race like Chris Saldane is, but I like what Kobe's doing. Just get a clear head. He needs one more fish to be his fifth fish, and it would help tremendously. For sure. There he is. Not a keeper. We'll measure him, but he's gonna be short, I think. About a 14 incher. I believe. Yep. 
14 three quarter. I didn't figure he was a keeper, but that's all right. We got that's a sign. It's a sign. A lot of people look at Kobe Krieger, think Florida guy. You know what? What does he know about this thing? Grew up in Michigan, so he definitely knows. Uh, you know both brown and green, and uh, great to have him. Uh, on the water with us, but let's roll on up to that dam and join the Zal Dangerous one and see how his day is going here on day number two. Oh my gosh, that is huge, whatever it is. Look how big that thing is. I think it's bending my rod. That is a heavy fish. Golly, that's a big drum. Oh. Don't do anything funny. Come on. Oh. No. I knew that was a cast too. The bait's got to sweep across there. Come on. <laughs> I feel the pain. I've got so many drum right up there. But the very next cast, it could be a small mouth. It could be a large mouth. The humdrum day continues for Chris Zaldane at the dam, but as you said, any moment it can happen. I don't know what to say right now, Davey. <laughs> drum alert. <laughs> the drum alert. The little drummer boy will continue it on up at the dam, and we'll follow the action all day long on Bassmaster Live. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. The beautiful Shoals area here in Florence, Alabama, Pickwick Lake, a lake my partner Davey Height knows very, very well. The scene of his eighth Bassmaster win, and that is the scene of our third stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series here in beautiful Florence, Alabama. Davey Height, good to be with you. It's always great to spend time on the road with our bass family, but... Uh, the sad part about that is we're only family because we're not with the family we have at home, and I know you're missing someone today. I am. i got to give a, a shout-out. March 21st is my wife Natalie's birthday, so happy birthday, Natalie. Sorry that we're here by the lake, but we're having a fun time seeing a lot of fish caught. Brian knew with a five-pound smallmouth just a few minutes ago. Happy birthday, Natalie, and we'll give you the gift that keeps on giving, and that is Bass Live. Let's go to Chad Pipkins, talk to him this morning. He told me how important subtle hints were. A fish he missed yesterday morning is what locked him into the way he's fishing here this week. Come on, bring us the, bring us the magic, baby. It's been tough. I mean, it hasn't been like, it wasn't crazy good yesterday morning. So I actually, I caught two or three before I even caught one yesterday. So I just feel like it's the second day after the front. We got east winds. They're just down there, not, not biting. I mean, I've had like maybe, maybe three or four short strikes where they thump it and they just don't have it. And you know, they're all good ones. They just, they don't want to bite. One of the ones I caught, got them on the trailer hook. Just kind of milling around here, and they did seem to slide back a little bit. They're, they're not where I caught them yesterday yet. But we just got to keep hunting, and uh, yeah, I still think it's going to happen. Got a lot of time, and the best three, four hours of the day should be coming up. So we'll mill around a little bit behind us, and hopefully we'll run into some of the right ones. Because we are due. The next one's going to get his eyes crossed, respectfully speaking, of course. I can see him down there. Just won't bite. Come on. Well, Chad, obviously you can tell there, caught a lot of his fish yesterday afternoon. Said he only caught a few fish before lunchtime, two or three. And uh, talking to him yesterday evening, he 
caught 15 or 20, so definitely looking for better things in the afternoon. You notice a big difference in the water clarity there where Chad is versus most of the other anglers. A lot more stained water, which is not what he normally likes, but you don't have a lot of choice here. It's hard to find real clear water here, but uh, he's proven, and we saw Brandon Polnick yesterday, uh, you can still catch fish in water that color. Talk to me about how important literally just generating bites is in this event and chad said that to me this morning he said man it was actually a fish i lost you know he thought it was a good fish but he said it was just the opportunity to have that bite but if you don't get that bite you leave that area in that entire pattern disintegrates yeah the thing is pickwick is a great fishery no doubt we saw those how many stringers over 20 pounds waiting yesterday but then we also saw some great fishermen that struggled to catch a fish or maybe only had one or two fish so there's not schools of fish everywhere, but once you get around some fish, you know that you can catch the quality and you can have 20 pounds in no time. So it's encouraging to get a bite. Even, you know, you want to put that fish in a boat, but even if you get a bite and lose a fish, at least you're getting bites. And if you're getting bites on Pickwick, it could be a five pound smallmouth, it could be a five or six pound largemouth. Toby Creeker just moments ago, we saw him put a fish in the boat, but another non-keeper. But still, again, generating bites, uh, keeping him committed to what he's doing. And uh, and as we've seen, he's cycled through several different areas, not far apart, just a few miles apart. But uh, those key adjustments. And is this tournament, are we done seeing changes? Can, can I say now it's about to settle down, or is it just going to continue the whole way through? Well, Bill Owen's going to hope it's going to settle down because he's doing really well on that shallow wood on the main river. But... Some of these other anglers won't change. It's like a Chris Saldane. He's just not been able to connect today like he did yesterday. But there again, most of his better fish were in the afternoon. But here's the deal that we talked about with Kobe Krieger, watching him. On a uh, stick right there. Trying to make his earn it, aren't they? You will not take my ice cream away. So I thought he no, had a bite there. But on, Kobe's plan, it appears, is to come back down here where we, he caught a few of his keepers yesterday just below where we're standing, put that fifth fish in the boat and then go back. We heard him say, go back up to the tail race. But here's what you have to wonder. If it takes him an hour or an hour and a half, he's already been down here at least 30 or 40 minutes. What would that 40 minutes or an hour have been where he knows bigger fish are? So do you want to put that keeper in the boat or do you stay all in like a Chris Saldane and say, that 45 minutes, that hour that I leave could be the magic time where I need to be there to catch another big smallmouth like we saw him catch this morning. Yeah, I would also imagine that has to come into effect when you guys talk about how important those lines are and those exact key spots. It's a big area, but there's only just tiny key zones. it got to be thinking about protecting your area as well. Yeah, but, you know, it's it's everyone's different. I think mentally... It looks like for Kobe, he wants to just leave there, get the fifth fish in the boat, and then I'll go up there and deal with if somebody's where I caught my fish this morning, I'll just deal with it. But uh, we're all different as fishermen, and, and maybe he just needs that fifth fish like, like we talked about. But I would hate to spend an hour away from where I think you've got your best chance to win the tournament. I, mean, I, I think as an elite angler, if you want to win, you should spend every minute where you think you can win. Now, there are tournaments when – in practice or in the events, you never found that place where you think you can win. But obviously, Kobe, day one leader, has found a place where he can win. And, and for me as an angler, I would want to stay there from takeoff to check in. How important do you think it is to remove that thing from your brain? You hear it all the time, tournament anglers. I get my five and I calm down. When I hear you say that, maybe that's not your theory. And uh, you've, you've won a few. So <laughs> Well, we like that. I mean, we all like that as anglers. But you have to... Uh, think about where you're at. You're not going to win with five keepers on Pickwick. You're, you're just not. You're going to have to have five good fish. Uh, and, you know, 50th place, $10,000, that's nothing to sneeze at. I understand that. But if you want to win on Pickwick, you're going to have to have those 20-pound stringers like we saw some angles with yesterday. Well, you're going to have to keep yourself in the top 50 to keep yourself in this tournament. But let's have some striker daily trivia. I mean, I, I mean, Bass Live is not the same without striker daily trivia. And uh, what is the, <laughs> Davy Heights' a biggest bag on Pickwick Lake back in 2011? Well, I, I, I cannot. Well, second, 
to which angler? There we go. Okay, there we My go. My biggest bag was second to which angler? We'll answer when we come back, and I'll probably be able to read it better when we come back. But <laughs> one way or another, we will figure it out, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll give you an answer to our star striker daily trivia right here on Bass Live from the shores of Pickwick Lake. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome back to Pickwick Lake and another sunny Sunday morning here to kick off day number two of the Bassmaster Elite Series on Pickwick Lake here in beautiful Florence, Alabama. I asked you guys a question. That is our striker trivia. And now I have actually figured out how to read said question. Basically, it is Davy Heights' biggest bag was second to only A, Denny Brower, B, Keith Poche, C, Greg Hackney, or D, Steve Kennedy. Uh, I will give you the honors first. Davy Height, I think you have an advantage. I uh, should have an advantage. I'm pretty sure it was A, Denny Brower. I was gonna go with a Denny Brower, but that wouldn't make this very much fun. So I'll go with Steve Kennedy and I will lose just like that. <laughs> and that is exactly how our partnership is meant to work. And Davey, you got it right. And Denny Brower led that event on day number one. Similar kind of conditions, dirty water throwing a jig, if I remember right. Very similar conditions. Uh, a lot of what Bill Lowen is doing looks exactly like what Denny Brower was doing, fishing shallow in that flooded vegetation. Well, if Bill Lowen looked like Denny Brower, who was actually his roommate on tour for a number of years, this guy looks a lot like, like you looked like when we were here last time a decade ago. All that trash for blown in, he flipped that trash. They're not on all of them, but if you get a bite, it's going to be a big largemouth. Let's see if we can flip this tree. See, Zal, they mixing it up a little bit here. Uh, just, just having a slow start today. A lot of drum, but not many bass. But the one thing that you've talked about, and a lot of anglers have talked about from the start, I mean, you're going to go through a lot of numbers up there, but when you do connect with a bass, quite often it's the kind you want. That was totally the reason I committed to that in, in 2011, because I had two bites up there in practice, two, two bass, bass bites. Krieger hooked up live. It feels like a good one. I haven't sliced. He jumped, a small mouth, smally. Number five anyway. Thank you, Lord. The plug fell out, yeah! The plug fell out of his mouth right when I grabbed him. Number five. All right. I work for that sucker. That's four small mouths I caught on this bank right here. So it gets a little deeper, I guess. All right, that makes the trip worth it down through here. Kobe Krieger did exactly what you talked about. Davey came down, filled out his limit. What does that feel like? As a competitor, it's got to be all of a sudden the blood pressure drops and... Well, things are going the right way for him. You, you heard him say there, the, the bait came out of the fish's mouth once he got it in his hand. So definitely things going right for him. It took him about an hour to, to leave up there behind the dam and come down here just, just along this shoreline, just below McFarland Park and catch that fifth fish. We'll see how long it'll take him to go back up there and try to catch larger fish. Another angler having in a great tournament, the 2017 Bass Nation National Champion, Caleb Summerall. Thank you. 
Oh, you going where? Donk. Where at the baby? Hey, keep the wheels on the bus, baby. Keep the wheels on the bus. Mm-hmm. That's what that's for you, buddy. Daddy caught a bass on a spinnerbait. He loves a spinnerbait. Clay Lee, the next one's for you, baby. Love y'all and I miss y'all. Good one there Thank for you, Caleb. No doubt about it. He said that's going to keep the wheels on the bus. The bus is going to roll right it. through to day number three. You keep catching them like that. <laughs> I think we'll see, we're starting to see it already, that sunshine and the afternoon bite will be better just like it was yesterday. And certainly headed in the right direction there for Caleb. Seeing lots of ridiculously brightly colored spinnerbaits. Is that all watercolor or is it time of year again? It's, it's watercolor, it's, it's primarily watercolor. Although we see, you know, when we go up north, you see a lot of bright colored spinnerbaits in the clear water because those smallmouth are sight feeders and you really want to give them something to focus in on. They can feel the vibration of those blades, but when they seek it out, they, you need that bright color for those fish to focus in on. A trash bass. That's awesome. A little drainage pipe, classic early spring after a rain. Trash piles. This gives me the confidence to do the smallmouth thing for the rest of the day. That was awesome. Not huge, but I mean, it's number three. Heck yeah. Got to adapt. That was a cool catch. From what I like some that. call trash fish to trash bass. I mean, and that is going to give him the confidence uh, to lock down and do that smallmouth thing. Like you said, let's have a look at that fish one more time. Well, he called it. He said, I'm going to go get in some of those areas where the debris is piled up in these 80s and catch me a largemouth. And he did just that. That largemouth there for Chris Aldana, I believe fish number three today, I believe, for him. And, uh, you know, two away from his limit, obviously, going to give him that confidence to stay in that area. And uh, you talked about it, you know, those subtle moves up there. I mean, he stayed in that zone, really, but, I mean, he's not moving far, but he's making moves, making adjustments, and making moves on the leaderboard as well. Yeah, but I like what Kobe said, and, and, and Chris, you're going to see him right back up there because they know the quality of fish that they have a chance to catch up there at the tail race means everything. Boy, that is like a, where did he move to? <laughs> it does not look like the excited. dam. We'll let you know if we're gonna get started or not. I'm like, okay, we're not going. I'm really surprised Kobe hasn't gone back up there yet. Yeah. There's a good one. This is why he hasn't gone back up yeah, there yet, yeah. Dave. I'm not really shocking. I think he's a good one. There's a big one. Get my boat out from on top of him. Oh God, big, big large mouth. Mm. Yes! We 
got a call, baby. <laughs> That's four pounder, I believe. We got a call, son. Wow, what a call, a mixed bag of bass once again for what is turning out to be King Kong Kobe here on Pickwick Lake. He's our day one leader and uh, catching him again here on day number two. But our leader on top of the leaderboard, Bill Lowen, trying to search down his first Elite Series win and doing the very same thing right behind him. Scott Martin, but uh-oh, in third place, our reigning Bassmaster Classic champion. We'll be back all day long on Bassmaster Live. The Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, and by Nitro Boats. Day two action marches on here on Pickwick Lake here. Florence, Alabama, third stop of the year. The Bassmaster Elite at Pickwick Lake. And of course, this is moving day. You gotta be in that top 50 if you wanna fish on. For the last two days of this tournament, Bill Lowen making a big move today from third all the way up to first place. Bigger moves by Scott Martin, Hank Cherry, Kobe Krieger. We just saw him catch a good four pounder. He'll be moving back up a little bit here. Once that updates there and Mark Zona, these, uh, these guys have got a lot of fishing time left today, and you, you think it's—I I think they're kind of catching them on pace with what they did yesterday, if not a little bit, a little bit better. I think you're right, Tommy Sanders, and that's kind of what we thought might transpire in this event. As the water gets a little bit more stable, you're going to see the weights go up. We got to see six 20-pound bags yesterday, and I'm—I'm I'm going to go on a limb, and we're going to see more than that this afternoon. Um, and, and here's what's really bizarre. There is something that goes on from McFarland Park to that tail race of the Wilson Dam this time of day where they just start to bite. We got to see that with Davey and young Dave Mercer moments ago. Absolutely. Yeah, Kobe Krieger sliding back down there. Uh, Chris Saldane forsaken to slide into a little uh, a little trash pile, a little uh, little backwater area there. Trash! Trash! And picking up a good one out of that trash there. It was a lot of fun to watch. John Cruz, the man on top of the bubble right now. Got to stay there, 16-10. Improve on that through the course of the day. Because you should definitely <laughs> want to fish day three here as things continue to get a little bit, a little bit better. Greg Hackney in 53rd place. That's kind of critical for the man who came here with the lead and the Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. We got to be careful, though. Greg does not like to touch that bass track. But we're going to get out on the water well, uh, okay. live we'll, right now. We'll, we'll you cautiously. know what I mean, Tom. We'll cautiously. Quad box. Look at that. Yeah, thank you. Look at Chris Aldane up there. No, springtime trash pile. No, that's that's the pipe coming from Wilson Dam. He's He's gone underneath the Wilson Dam now, Z. That is, that is crafty. Well, you see Kobe Krieger fishing just down from McFarland. Boy, and he has the benefit of just moments away from where he caught big ones below the tail race, fishing a little homemade crankbait, little East Tennessee style with that spinning ride, Tommy. Those two catches we saw from Krieger and Zaldane are just really going to give them free, free reign to get back up there in the tail race and do right. what got them there a little bit more. It's kind of padding their, uh, padding their situation. Uh oh. You know, one of the things that we talked about on our Fox broadcast earlier today, it just seems like besides Scott Martin, that general area from McFarland up towards the tail race doesn't get going until this time of day to where from, you really where Chad Pipkins is, which is just down lake from what's known as the power lines to the trace bridge and and downstream from there it, your largemouth guys like lowen and gross 
they they steadily climb up that leaderboard and then all of a sudden when those tail race fish start to bite which is exactly what happened when davy height won years ago man just the quality from mcfarland of that tail race every time we're here it's hard to compete with all right let's get up and go we just heard sal dane he's getting ready to head back up there most likely I'm watching a Clark Wenland I'm having a bit of a struggle today with only one fish in the live well so far. Brock Mosley hanging in the top 25 for now. Heard Ronnie talk about Brock Mosley. Brock Mosley actually kind of cut his teeth on this body of water, trying to learn current, how fish position. Said he spends a lot of time here in the winter and early spring just, just practicing, goofing around. Majority of his damage yesterday with a swim bait. So many of our competitors swim baiting around the tail race. I don't know if it's the post front conditions type. I thought yesterday was kind of the post front, but man, I hadn't got the smallmouth to hardly bite at all. I got caught one. And it's small, but it's a keeper. But I, I mean, I'm not even getting bit. Yesterday, it was just, even when I wasn't catching them, I was getting bit. Man, two of my keepers are spotted bass. And it just kind of makes me feel like they ain't biting real good. We just can go back through our main stuff and try it again. Yesterday, it was a lot better from now to one o'clock. And then, so we'll go see if they're in a better mood yet. Tell me a weird question. Well, and I'm, I'm going to ask Ron and Such this same question. <laughs> I think this is the first time that we actually, and I'm curious to, to know your guys' opinion, um, stuff we usually talk about behind the curtain. Uh, this is the first time that we've done a broadcast, but whether it's been you know, other networks or here, you know, Fox that we did earlier today, where it's day one and day two on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. I, I kind of liked it. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I did. Okay. It felt like, it felt like you're, we were, you know, and this is how every single Bassmaster Elite Series event is. Days one and days two, you're kind of feeling it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're walking through the forest you're looking for the little fuzzy bear which you get to on semifinal you know the third day of uh -huh. the tournament the championship usual championship sunday i liked the cluelessness that we usually have on days one and day i, I enjoyed it yeah yeah and, and there was there was enough of a fish catching you know yes. vibe going on to to keep it interesting i see i see what you're saying yeah i, I can see that Well, perfect. I love Beautiful weather. weather today. Beautiful weather today as we watch our TH Marine Weather Watch. Tomorrow's outlook. Oh, look at that. Room temperature. 72 Beautiful. degrees. Low tonight. Tomorrow night, I should say, of 57 degrees in advance of Championship Tuesday. But mostly cloudy. Not as much sunshine yesterday. So what yeah. will that mean to these fish? Well, Kobe Krieger said one of the reasons why he thought some of those really big smallmouth that he weighed in yesterday he said, man, it is sunlight. That is smallmouth 101. They're able to see the bait better. They get more aggressive as the sun gets high, which is true from here all the way up to the Canadian border and past it. And we're not going to have that tomorrow, Tom. No, we're not going to have it tomorrow. We're not going to have it Tuesday. But what we will have is a lot less competitors around that three mile stretch from where Kobe's at right there to the tail race. A lot of pressure there today. This place like Gunnersville, it gets pressure 365 days a year and uh, to its credit just keeps so keeps sure kicking them out. On that last cast. Yeah. I thought I was hungry you know, and if you didn't watch yeah. the earlier broadcast, one of the things that amazed me was Eldane and Kobe Krieger talking about fishing below the tail race there on day one and said there was virtually no local pressure. Begging, boys. Well, look out. Well, look out now. Yeah, in the big one. I think he's a caller. Ooh. He's definitely a caller.
he's, I know he's bigger than that large mouth. Positive. Very important to remember that he did hold up two big smallmouth and had 25 12 yesterday, but he had two large mouth and three smallmouth in his limit. Mm, that's right. Excuse it was a picture definitely, most definitely mixed limit. You know what I mean? Everything that he put on the scales what yesterday the uh, homemade the flat sided crankbait. He did keep that right. fish to call. I gotta, I gotta most him of his damage by the. Times and I'm going. Tail race was done with a heavy swim bait like. Chris Saldane. Eat it. Dude, I can't Holy see a lick. Holy cow, dude. It's huge. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Dang it. Huge one followed it. It was like a five or six or better. Oh boy. Dang it. Mm. Wow. Put that in the memory bank. I'll switch up colors. Wow. Dang. I pulled it out in that muddy water and disappeared. Dang it. Gosh, that was a big one. Chris Elde ain't gonna stuff that image into his into his uh, database there and think about going back to that spot right there where he saw a giant. Let's get back down to Chad Pipkins. Boy, Chad Pipkins has lived right there all day long. Mm -hmm. He did make one comment earlier, missing a lot of fish, put a trailer hook on his bladed jig earlier and landed one that he barely had hooked. Catch him, catch him, catch him, catch him. Yeah. It's about time. I had to slow it so down. Woo. It took a long time, but we got four. Oh my goodness, it knocked the fire out of it. This takes forever though, gosh. I might need to slow down. I wasn't really hitting bottom much and I really slowed down that cast. I swear they're just sitting in the current like tucking behind grass and you have to fish it so slow and once they hit it, they're gone. I thought I lost that one twice. We're gonna find out because I'm gonna slow it down. Durr. It's Where's been fun to watch Pipkins now? in that area from Coger Island Man. up Lake. Because there are not a lot of anglers that have been able to make this bite right here happen, which we talked about it yesterday. So many fish caught on bladed jigs, lipless crankbaits on that flat just off of the main river. Pipkins, one of the only Elite Come Series on, guys girl. to get it done so far. I know you're down there with your little boyfriend I just caught. Oh, he told you he was down there. Go. Oh, they want it so slow. That fish just knocked the fire out of it. We just caught number four. That guy is fishing, man. Look at that, he tangled me up. And I was telling myself I, I might be fishing too quick. Like you have to crawl it. And I slowed down and I just caught that fourth one and just had another, felt like a nice one, slam it. And it might be getting ready at some point to get a little frisky. But you can see me turning the handle. I mean, I'm barely moving it, but that is the only way I can get bit. So 
Might as well roll with it. We just need one big one and uh, we'll be on track. Can happen quick, so I'm excited to keep milling around and I think the worst four hours of fishing is what we just had of the week, so. Thankful to have four and we're gonna keep hunting. We're gonna catch old Gertrude. We are due. It's been a slow start to the season. And I got babies that need shoes now, wives that need shoes, I need shoes, so we all need something. So time to eat. <laughs> Man from Lansing, oh. Michigan there. Knocked him out yesterday, 21-2, and thinking maybe things are starting to turn that way again today. For Chad Pippen, yeah. boy, it has been a great been morning a for Bill Lowen. Yes, it has, Tommy. Bill Lowen kind of leaving his primary area for the first time today. And uh, it's been a, an emotional week for the Michigan State Spartans up there with March Madness. Mm, well, yeah. Yeah. Basketball season is over. Yep. Spring. Bill. <laughs> Sprung. Crack of the bat. MLB, MLB, MLB. Oh, don't you do it. Come here. That was pretty. That was pretty. Just trying to run new water and find some more stuff for tomorrow. And it's actually made a pretty decent call with a spinner bait, big bladed spinner bait. Just waking it around. I'm just trying to cover some water right now. See if I can find, like I said, just looking for some more stuff for tomorrow. Um, if nothing happens, we'll just go back up there where we were this morning. Could be feeding time. Spinner we got a couple five right pounders. Yeah. Come across the board on them. Matt Robertson, Hunter Shryock, oh. five pounders. Wow. Robertson needed that one fish yesterday. He was one of yeah. the one of the ten percenters. That Zona mentioned having one fish or less, maybe the 20 percenters, I can't Doesn't remember. Doesn't even work anymore. Scott Cannon. Who was that you were talking about, Rod? Matt, Matt Robertson. Yeah. The Kentucky Yeah, Canterbury, big turnaround, Such. Yep. 18 and a half today from 90th to 39th right now. He had fallen uh, from about 45th AOI to 90th, counting yesterday's very few points, 11 points. And he, you don't expect that from Scott Canterbury or 2019 no, that was AOI. Super winner. surprising yesterday. Kind of. He's trying to make that cut. He's in 39th right now with 18 8 on the day. So, Tommy, you watched Matt Robertson yesterday. You know my dad follows the Bassmaster Elite Series. Yes, yeah, so oh, yeah. He watches a lot, sure. of, yeah. a lot of the live stuff, and he was watching it. didn't recognize Matt Robinson, <laughs> Robertson, and he said, he said, oh, he had one, and he's wearing the on him hat. Did you think he might switch to an off him hat when he <laughs> oh does my gosh. Wow. <laughs> right. wow. Hey, listen, Big Al is honest to a fault. That's, that's right. Nice. You know, I that's mean, why you, you don't lie. For that. That's why you're not going to lie, right, Z? And that's a that's a legitimate exactly. that's a legitimate question. I mean, we're we're all either on them or off them at some point. Oh. Well, that's odd. I mean, Z that's like a that's a major shot fired right there. No, that's the, <laughs> it's a simple observation. Did you see guys like Mosley and Wentlet having a rougher day today, Z? I I was thinking. How they I thought on day one they followed up. I thought Mosley was going to crush him. Me I too. really did. 
I thought. I did yeah. too. And you think about the guys like Winlet, Brandon Card, both catching a 7.5 and a 7.6. Card only had a seven uh, pounder for his 17 pound bag, so those guys really just leaned on that one. Oh my God, stay on, oh, baby, come on. Chad Pitkins, this hook up on. live. Come on, please God, stay on there. I'm coming by you. Yeah! Woo! Come on! Thanks, Brandon! It went dunk! Oof. Down the gullet, baby. It said dunk! Woo! Well, that is a big one. Thank you, sir. I'd like to say thanks to my good buddy, BP. Every time we talk and practice, I catch a big and he showed up and I caught two. It's right where I just missed the other one. All right, see, I'm not hooked in anything. Oh. Could get him back. Oh. <sighs> Beauty. Well, that is over. That's right. over six, man. Mm -hmm. Or right at. Knuckles! Come on! Getting it back where he started at fourth place. Megan. Yeah, that's over a six. Bit like that up, just boom. Oh, my goodness. Backside that's of a main river about. island, softer current. Woo! So Gotta he just had swinging. to slow things down. Gotta I thought that was the, the new clue. That one hit it like those others just boom, but he actually got all of the business. Come on, baby. They weren't right there this morning. They're, this is back where I caught them. I think it's that little bit of wind. Current changes. We were catching them on the back side of the eye, that seam down there. And now they might have slid on back up. I'm okay with it. It's got to keep sliding with them. She freaking destroyed it. Oh, I feel good. Good. That is the exclamation five, huh? I'll get you a high five here in a second. I gotta, I gotta calm my nerve down. Prospects for new shoes uh, looking a whole lot better now. Baby. It's so subtle. What's that? Five. <laughs> Liar. Ha! Feeling it. Feeling real Ooh. good. Finally. Yeah, feeling good. And hey, next month we're headed to Texas. And if you think of Chad Pipkins. And the state of Texas, uh -huh. you think of this scene at Lake Ford. Yeah. Gotcha. Sparkling thoughts, Tommy. Sparkling yes, thoughts got on to a see Chad Pipkins, exactly. Sparkling Woo! thoughts on a Sunday. Chad Pipkins <laughs> feeling it, getting it done, catching his new, as the kids say, PB on Lake Ford. Yes! One of the venues we're headed next. Biggin. Oh my God, that's there. You're gonna, that's, oh my God. Please stand, oh no, don't do it, oh God, no. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, please Lord, let me land this fish. Where you going, where you going? Please God, stay on there. Oh no, oh my God. Please God, stay on. A 10 pounder or at least an eight or nine pounder right new personal did we get some mileage out of yeah. that or not i'm thinking we did 
<laughs> Absolutely, Chad Pipkins with just an incredible, incredible fish on Lake Fork. Wow, it's like an R. Kelly remix. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm having a seizure. <laughs> oh, that was a moment. One of the great moments it of 2019. Was. Yeah. Yeah. And then just moments ago, Come man, on. oh man. I'm coming by you. Gosh, talk about the right one to fill out yeah! a five bass limit. Moments ago, Woo! big one from Chad Pipkins. Come on. Thanks, Brandon. Six pounds, you say, Z. Could well be. Chad Pipkin's really getting something dialed in Woo! in the afternoon here. Gotta keep. <laughs> Live coverage of the guaranteed rate elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. We are marching on through day number two to this tune right here. I think we all recognize it. Oh, it is so easy. At times, so hard, Tommy Sanders. Mm. Chad Pipkin's four bass, slow, painful grind this morning. But you know what? To fill out your five bass limit with what <laughs> you call a five. No, it's not Chatty Pipkin's. We're going to call it a six. That is the power pole replay of the day. Not a personal best, but a dadgum Northern Alabama stud. Chad Pipkin's here, the power pole replay of the day. That's well done. Yeah. Hey, Tommy, I'm going to say something right now. Yeah. Somebody that's going to be a headache going into semifinal Monday and championship Tuesday, though. Huh? Chad Pipkins obviously getting work done. We were with Steve Kennedy yesterday where he had one net bass. Chad Pipkins, my friend, you are the East Lansing kid. The Power Bowl <laughs> replay of the day. I'm going to tell you something. Steve Kennedy had one bass at this time yesterday, mm. caught 19 pounds, and he's at 20 pounds again. He is going to be a problem by tournament end. Back out to Caleb Summerall live. Yeah, see, he just landed a five and a half pound on his bass track, jumped to third place. Third bag over 20 pounds today. How y'all doing? I'll be great once I catch three more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was that that made me feel good about life. <laughs> it's ripping, man. It's ripping. How about you, little man, you like the fish? Yeah? You catch any big bass? No. One day. One day. Thank you, buddy. Doing a live mix where Summerall said yesterday he went and bought an anchor. He said it lasted about a minute. He lost it in the <laughs> tail race <laughs> about a minute. That's awesome. <laughs> She's got a windsock or something. We're gonna jump right across the river right now. Brock Mosley. Said he was dragging it and he was still going six miles an hour and then gone. Brock Mosley said he caught about 10 fish yesterday and missed about 10 fish. The interesting thing Mosley said, they were on the top current. Uh-oh. Whoa. Whoa, Mr. Large Mouth. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> about time I caught one of those up here.
I was due for one of them. Not in the box till he's in the box, so we'll yeah. see if well, that makes we'll, it in there or not. Check back on it. Over to Kobe Krieger. Over the side. Should be okay. A little confusing. Well, we've we were struggling there for a while, and, and I caught I think three and filled my limit and called twice. So we're. We're in a pretty good spot. I need to, you know, I want to get to 20 pounds, which I'm not to. I need to catch a couple of big ones, so come back up the river where, you know, I've caught the majority of my big ones, and uh, we're going to spend the next three and a half hours or three hours and 15 minutes up here trying to catch, you know, I'm fishing for two bites the rest of the day. Um, you know, and you pull in one of these little seam deals or rapid situations and you get well in a hurry and that's what I'm gonna try to do from now till the time we go in. Um, bite's a lot different today it seems like to me. I don't think they're biting near as good up here in the river as they did yesterday. Don't know if that's the water dropping a little bit or it's gotten a lot dirtier up here. I think that has a lot to do with it so we're gonna jump around a few spots and hopefully Catch a big one. Looking at Kobe's earlier catches today, Ronnie, something that Tommy and I were talking about. Hey, 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 hey. It, it has taken almost it, it, it's taken right now. We still got a lot Ooh. of time left, and I don't have any run time. Basically, the launch is right there. So it's just a matter of getting those three little bikes and putting them in the boat. Um, there's a ton of fish. I feel like I'm at the base of the of the Wilson Dam just with how, how loud it is even when you're not there. But what I, I, what I was gonna what I was gonna say was, every local tournament really, and Ronnie, you follow a lot of the the regional events that come here. Everything's really kind of taken, you know, twenty three to twenty six pounds for the last month. But to do that in the I, look, I, I knew we, I we talked we you know, you, you had a feeling we were gonna see a twenty five pound bag this week, but to do it in the conditions that we had yesterday. Man, that is that is really, really impressive. And then adversely, somebody's going to find another 25 plus pound bag the next few days just based on when that current changes slightly, what it'll do to some of those ditches down lake or those main bars and whatnot. And even here at the tail race, just because the current gets lesser doesn't mean the fishing is going to get better or worse. Like for Man. sure, it's going to change it just a little bit. Uh, well, you you mentioned this gentleman, pick, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Scary, uh -huh. scary. BMW trailer hitches bonus coverage with Steve Kennedy. Steve, hey man, <laughs> getting getting kind of fast and furious for you yet? Uh, I wouldn't say fast and furious. I caught a bunch of little ones this morning, but uh, I've been struggling a little bit. I hadn't had a bite in quite a while, and then I just uh, just managed to catch a five and a half pound smallmouth. Uh, Hadn't had a bite for over an hour, and then I got two bites there and caught that big one. So pretty cool, cool stuff. Steve, yesterday, yesterday was absolutely painful for about six hours, <laughs> and, and we go offline, and you weigh in 19 pounds in an area that you told me you had pretty much written off for this event. Exactly. The the flow wasn't where it needed to be in practice, and. Uh, so yeah, I'd been up here twice. I hadn't caught a fish over four pounds. I mean, I caught a couple, but uh, I knew it was cranking. I knew they'd probably show up, you know, get in the right key areas. And uh, but but I didn't have the confidence to come up here the first day. And also, I threw out boat seventy two, so it wasn't like I was going to get one of the key spots anyway. But uh, 
But yeah, I came back up here yesterday afternoon, managed to catch one that was a uh, five and a quarter, and uh, you know, managed to get a limit to save my day. And today I stayed up here all day. I had a limit with a couple of a uh, couple of spots in it this morning, and, and, and now we're hunting for big ones. And so far, so good. I've, I've found two, three key little places that uh, I've caught them in the past and managed to get a bite, a big bite. So. I can see a few more on down the way too, so I'm looking forward to it. Steve, how's the prospects for tomorrow possibly going into Tuesday for this? Ah, I mean, I like my chances. This, this is a good day for sure, but uh, the water has gotten muddier and the water is dropping. They're, uh, they're turning it off a little bit, so it's a little bit slower and a little bit dirtier. You know, I. I don't know how that's going to change the fish. I have no idea. We're going to go fishing, and uh, you know, I'm going to stay up here with inside the dam as much as I can. And anyway, I like my chances. I I should get five bites every day. I just I have a hard time believing I won't. So. You talk about getting one of those key spots in that area there, Steve. What what makes for a key spot in in that particular part of the I, lake? I mean, the, the main deal is some kind of current break, a big eddy. I mean. I just saw Zaldane. Zaldane's probably got the biggest eddy up there. I wish I could get in there and fish that one. And then Kobe Krieger's on the other corner of the island on the other side. So he had the big bag yesterday. And uh, I ended up going up there on a secondary bank, just fishing down the bank is where I've caught most of my fish. And uh, it doesn't have a big current break, but I'm just looking for a little bitty, you know, one big rock sticking out or a little, I know where some bars are that are covered up with water here. so. Uh, so yeah, you're just trying to find any kind of current break up here with the water cranking the way it is. Once once the water slows down, these fish can position anywhere out in the middle out here, and they get to me they get a lot harder to catch. They can be caught, but it's it's more just casting fishing out in the middle. And the fish I'm catching are sitting in just these perfect little places, and you know you go hundreds of yards, even an hour before you get to that perfect spot. But when I see it, I'm like, there's got to be one there. And, Five out of ten, maybe. I don't know. Steve, you absolutely love these extreme conditions when these rivers flood. Yes. It. I feel like it throws everybody else off their game. It's not that I'm uh, catching that much more than I normally would. It, it positions the fish for me. You know, anytime you got this kind of flood, they're going to be in those key spots. They can't be anywhere else. And then it throws everybody else off for some reason. I don't know. I don't know what I know that they don't. But uh, but yes, I love the flood events. Anything that changes and just something different. So I don't know. I don't know why it is. I mean, I grew up catching those shoal bass over in uh, Flint River. Those Flint River shoal bass in Georgia are by far my favorite fish to go catch. So I love love the current. I have a pretty good idea how it positions them and. And they're there today, so it's cool. Well, Steve, great work. Uh, end of yesterday and all through today. And Steve will, uh, well, they're going to not necessarily throw pick, out. Tommy. 50, but they're going to be 50 people less out there today. So yeah. his uh, his better prospects uh, certainly uh, could be a real thing tomorrow, as you say, Mark Stone. And I like his tone where he said, I, I think I'm in good shape to catch five a day. Yeah. If well, he you needed get bit that by five and Go ahead, Suge. He needed that last tournament where second day he only had two fish and he finished 7-1 back of Gustafson mm -hmm. for the victory. Well, one thing I thought was weird with Mosley talking to him yesterday after the weigh-in, he said the majority of his fish that he caught were on the up current side. Uh, the heaviest current, where the heaviest current yeah. would hit, whether it was a rock or a laydown, right, which you would have thought, as much as that current was ripping, that it would have been all so back current. It was all the up current side. That's not Very strange. Oh. Looks like a keeper small mouth there for Brock Mosley. Right there, so maybe getting something going here. It's been a pretty steady good catching. Good day of fishing. I'm absolutely. Steady catching all day, the likes of Bill Lowen, Kobe Krieger getting out there and catching them, taking a break from the tail race and catching them even down there. Coming by you. Chad Pipkin slowing things down, putting a giant, giant largemouth in the box. 
Things looking great on Pickwick right now. We will be right back. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Well, things are developing on this oh, yeah. second day of competition here. Very important day of competition. Chris Saldane has uh, kind of taken some time to slide back off the tail race, pick up a fish uh, here and there, and uh, probably making his way back right now, but uh, making another stop along the way. Mouth. He ain't that big. He ate the eight inch. I thought it was a toad. <laughs> That's a little bass for that giant swimmer. <sighs> I mean, <sighs> he freaking choked it. Two pounder. I thought that was her. Whew. Fourth fish for Zaldane. Got a couple of two pounders in the box. Going back to what Kenny was saying before our commercial break, and I got to really talk to him for a long time about what his mindset is when we have these these blown out lakes, you know, when there's a major influx of water. And he said, you know, growing up, it just makes the fish number one, a couple different things. He said, look, when you have this heavy of volume water coming through a system, those fish have to to get behind something. They have to they have to, you know, get in softer water. And the other thing is, he said, man, it's just it's it's current 101 to where they're going to be near the bank. You know, when this time of year, when you combine, it's March. The fish are gonna go shallow, and then when you have this massive amount of current flushing through, he said it's just so predictable. And I said, so. Will we see you up at the dam? He's like, not at all. I I'm fishing <laughs> isolated. I, you know, he was, and that's what we saw him doing yesterday. He was fishing softer current breaks, doing a lot of flipping up shallow. And there was still current going through where he was fishing. And he said throughout practice in some of those pockets that he was fishing, Tommy, he was talking about getting 20 to 30 bites Ooh. and only Ooh. caught one bass in those pockets yesterday morning and 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 i really think when he came up to the dam at, at you know one o'clock where he had one bass in his live well i think it was a hail mary you know yeah. i think he was at at total frustration with what his an, initial game plan was well, he turned it around for sure yes He's, he is he is relocated till further Kennedy's notice he's going to be fun to watch and, and I guess what is surprising, he's doing exactly what Zaldane is, exactly what Brock Mosley is doing, uh, and has pounded them all day long. Some more bonus coverage for you today. One of the stars of yesterday. Oh, Putting it early, the yes. best early limit in the boat. Well, Scott Martin and Scott, we catch up with you right here. Still doing, man, more than holding serve so far. What's been the key to it today? Well, a little bit of the same stuff. You know, I've been I've been uh, kind of learning as I go. I've caught, uh, caught several key fish today off completely new water stuff that obviously I didn't even fish yesterday. Just kind of running, running, running my maps on my uh, Garmin and uh, but staying offshore for the most part. I'm, I'm a little close to the bank right now, but. You know, just just bounce around a little bit, but I've I've caught some nice ones today. I think uh, I think my smallest one's three pounds, and I've got several other really pretty pretty nice ones today. So we're we're making a little move today. 
Hey, Scott, from where you start, it looks like you kind of have a two prong approach. You start obviously very close to McFarland Park and then you start running other areas looking to upgrade. It looked like this morning and we did not get to see it with our own eyes, but it looked like it was a lot more crowded this morning on your starting spot than it was on day one. I couldn't hear you, Z. I apologize. The phone's really, really bad. That's fine. I don't know what's wrong. Hear you real well, but um, I did start at McFarland this morning and caught a limit, weighed about 15 pounds. Uh, a small mouth, caught a, caught a real big large mouth there, kind of a kind of a crazy deal, unexpected, about a six pounder, and um, left there. And then since then, I've, I've called a couple more times with some four and a half, five pounders or so. So I've just been bouncing around the lake right now, but you know, it's been it's been nice to be able to start the morning off every day in a, a decent limit. It allows me to kind of fish patiently uh, the rest of the day, which is nice because, uh, again, I'm practicing right here. I've never fished it in my life and just uh, taking my time. And so far, it's been working. So uh, starting at McFarland has been a really, really good blessing for me. Scott, based on the changes you have seen today, where are we headed and how many more adjustments and, and how, how drastic adjustments are, are you going to have to make to make it all the way into day four and, and, and then do well then? You know, I, I, I don't know if there's any major adjustments other than just maybe trying to find some really good areas. You know, I'm starting to see a pattern. I think the pattern's going to hold up because the current's going to hold up. So I don't see the pattern really changing a whole lot, at least for what I'm doing. It's really going to boil down for me trying to just find some other schools of fish, some other key places where I can get a bite or two. And, uh, and I think that's what it's going to boil. I don't think I need to switch gears too much. But um, I think the weather's pretty stable and everything should be pretty good. But, you know, it's it's going to be hard to beat those guys up there at the tail race because you're dealing with a lot of big smallmouth up there. But, you know, if I can keep catching them like I am today, you know, we got a shot at this thing. Scott, thank you so much uh, getting to yes. pick the brain. Scott Martin a little bit. Man, with some great, great experience here, some great results here. And, of course, Scott Martin, a guy, man, for all the things he is, one thing is for certain, Scott Martin is most definitely a determined angler. Everything's about a goal, right? And, and, and I'm hoping I can achieve the goals that I've set forward here on the elites. They're, they're, they're stiff goals. They're, they're tough goals. I mean, uh, to win an elite event is not easy. To win an angler of the year is extremely hard. Uh, and then to possibly win... The Bassmasters Classic is the ultimate. You know, there's been a, a lot of people that have fished the Bassmasters Classic over the years, but very few have won it. Very few. And uh, and that's my goal. You know, that's what I'm fishing for. Hopefully, we can we can pull off something special over the over the next uh, you know eight or nine months or so, and uh, and have some fun doing it. You know, I'm excited about it. It's kind of a new beginning for me. Well, there's our unofficial leaderboard as per Bass Track right now. And still, Kobe Krieger started the day with the lead. And man, he is he is scrapped hard today. He has worked that tail race. He's, he's gone other places, fill out his limit. Man, oh man, hats off to Kobe Krieger, the veteran. Bill Lowen, another veteran right behind him. And Steve Kennedy, Mark Zona says, watch out for this guy today through Tuesday. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Nine of these major events here. This is stop number three on Fantastic Lake Pickwick. Let's get right out to Brock Mosley. Fishing kind of across from McFarland Park. You can see these beautiful bluffs across the way. He's down and across just a little bit. Zero rode yesterday and he's sitting there rotating. They are gorgeous. Oh, well. Rotating the spot. Stay hooked up. Get in the boat! Get! That's what we're looking for. Got it, baby. He was a foot under the surface. That was a very cool fish there. catch right there. Mm. Yeah, very this, cool fish catch. We talk about the current seams that Chris Zaldane's fishing, but the ones on a bluff wall are so much smaller. The strike zone is for him to, to pitch it right where he needed to and catch that fish is 
much harder to do at times. A 412 from Mosley there. He's back in the top 10. All at right. 10th. Wow. Also back in the top 10, Chad Pipkins. And our camera this hit time out yesterday. On Buddy Gross, he's got a couple fish. Buddy Gross, our camera's this dead on him right now. Time yesterday, Chad Pipkins made some really big late day calls. Big bass. Big bass. Nice one. Uh -huh. Yeah! And like I said before, this is why you throw a trailer hook. They don't want it. Come on! Yes! I told you I was going to get bit there. I threw up there and I said my thing wasn't running right and I'm feeling good. Perfect batch of grass there. Slow and steady. Boom. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, he stroked it. Trailer hook bass. If you don't throw a trailer hook on a chatterbait in the grass, especially on a post frontal day, whew. We gotta see what we gotta get rid of here. Man, that's a good one. Pretty sure it's the one I put over here. We'll double check. Woo, round and round we go. I think it's this guy. Bladed jig all day long for Pipkins. We've definitely seen him change colors up a little bit. But what's been amazing is he has bunkered into that area all of day one here and day number two. I throw it to you, young Ron Moore. How many bags over 20 do we see today? I said uh, in a conversation with Such, I believe Such, I said eight. Is that what I said to you? I, I started seeing these fish catches. I said 10. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, you I were think, just done. I, I said eight. I, our price is right yeah. at you, Ronnie. Z, you nailed it yesterday with six. I think we see all of 10 today, if not several more. This green pumpkin one probably looks like a daggone maple leaf coming down the river. Like, yeah, sure, Bill, we'll bite that one. Yeah. Along with the... Oh. I don't think he's gonna help me. I don't know, he might. I guess they don't think it looks like a maple leaf, huh? I don't think so. Truly don't think so. Bill Owen with one that probably won't help. He's had that good a day so far today. Gosh. And now that this lake has started to stabilize, it is going to be a fun Monday and Tuesday in this event. Going to head back up to McFarland Park. Caleb Summerall. Slow for Caleb to start his day. He got, a, got himself a keeper. A little bit farther down, just about 40 minutes ago. Oh my God. Yeah. Dude, you want to talk about luck? Outside the mouth. It's a very good one. <laughs> That's the ones. Clay Lynn, tell you to catch you one, baby girl. That's for you. Oh. Two more, baby. We ain't done. We ain't done. Maybe down, but we ain't done. We ain't out. I seen him on active target. I was scanning, I was scanning the piling, and literally, I was about four foot above the fish, 
and I, I saw my bait coming and I killed it. I got it down to a foot above his head in the reel and I watched him smoke it. Dude, that is crazy. Two more like that, baby. <laughs> we'll be all right. If you could tell, I was feeling that cast. <laughs> I was crawling that spinnerbait, dude. He started the day 10th and his bass track is not updating. It shows mm. him his no fish right now. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. See those barge tie-ups right there are a great current break in between the tail race and McFarland where we've seen guys catch them, but it's also the kind of middle of the road divider between the lock where you go to the left to head up to the Wilson lock or where you go to the right to go up to the dam. So it's kind of got two different, two different funnels oh of water no, coming, right coming around on, those pilings. Man, it's been... It's been a unique tournament with these guys having two days off. It, it has been, uh, in a weird way, it's a it's a really throwback tournament if that if that makes any sense. How these guys have adjusted dirty water, a lot of spinner bait fishing. three for Summerall. He kind of finished with some good momentum last year next to last. Uh, top 13 at Chickamauga and started the year off top 20 at Knoxville on Fort Loudon and Teleco. Really get it back on track here. Well, you can't say I didn't try to find one up there. That would have been a cluster, by the way, if one would have bit while I was up there. And it was a big one, it would have been a, we would have been in a predicament. amazing to watch from this time yesterday until the guys hit the bass master stage big bass big stage big dreams uh, yeah how many big fish got caught from this time to weigh in really from when we checked off air yesterday to weigh in from where we had guys on bass track that didn't even have limits you know that were 18 to 20 pounds when they hit the stage well, so you mean, Ronnie, we're talking about that the later check-in flights, do you think they had that yes. extra hour of sunshine? We kind of noticed in the way and that maybe of the 51 limits, more of them were in the back end. Not sure. I think there was several of them. Yeah, well, yeah the 7.5 I mean, from higher bars. percentage the, yeah, yeah. were the guys who got to stay out later. Popping. Yeah, everyone pretty optimistic about their chances that they can hang in there today. Get to day number three and on to day number four as conditions seem to be getting a little more favorable. If today's any indication, I don't think he's going to help me. Really been popping out there today. He might. And it's, it's been a catch fest all day long, but I'm telling you, when we came back from our midday break, they have absolutely crushed them here on Pickwick. Yeah, I've seen plenty of them. Some good ones as well. Kobe Krieger, look at that, hanging in there. 
actually extending his lead a little bit through over the past hour. Bill Lowen, Kennedy moving back up there. Scott Martin moving back up into the top 10. And it is cut day. That above all things, be in the top 50. And Paul Mueller, a winner mm. last year on the Elite Series. The man just atop, Takumi Ito right below him. Jamie Hartman, Brandon Cobb trying to move up. They got time to get it done. We got more to bring you from here at Pickwick. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. The legendary Shoals area and here in beautiful Florence, Alabama for the third stop of the Elite Series. And it's all Kobe Krieger since the very start of this tournament, Davey Height. And uh, Kobe Krieger picking up right where he left off here on day number two. Yeah, well, before this tournament, a lot of people said, with all this rain coming, can it be one again up there behind the Wilson Dam? Well, so far, Kobe Krieger has proven that it absolutely can. It's caught most of his fish right up there uh, within 100 yards of the Wilson Dam. The only other little thing, he's run down here close to McFarland Park and been able to catch a few fish, but here's a great shot of where he has caught most of his fish. A lot of them are smallmouth, a few Large mouth mixed in. You see there with a big spinner bait mixing up with baits. That first fish was on a crankbait. Uh, just he's found the right current seam, that edge there where that water goes from very, very swift and very, very rough to, to slack. And that's where those fish like to set up. The interesting thing is the water level has dropped quite a bit today. Will that seam hold up for two more days or will he have to move around and find another one? Yesterday, he did uh, most of his damage in the second half of the day. Well, things started a little earlier for him today. But you say that the thing's changing. If I look on the leaderboard, it means it seems like it was a little better for him today. Does that mean that it might get a little tougher the next few days? Well, it could. It just when that water level drops, when it, and it's going to, but it might stabilize. If it stabilizes, he could catch them at that one spot every day but if the water level goes down he will probably have to move around a little bit and relocate but he's had enough success at this point he's not gonna move very far he might have to relocate but we're hanging tight right here on location on the shores of pickwick lake and davy this tournament just from the very setup of it just simply because of our weather delay the first two days gives us a very different element when you think about it you know our championship two days our you know our semifinal round and the final day are going to be on weekdays does that help? I mean, it is Alabama, and you got to imagine there's going to be a little less pressure on the water. Definitely less pressure, but I've heard several anglers say, wow, it really hasn't been too bad this Saturday and Sunday. I think the high water, the flooding conditions, the stained water has kept a lot of the local anglers at bay. Well, uh, in a very familiar area to your eighth Bassmaster win right up there at the dam and Chris Aldane has done all his damage there since day number one and we talked about it earlier that shot there gives you just a tiny bit of an idea of not just how mentally but physically uh, punishing fishing up there can be it, it really is Dave and he stuck with it you can tell that Chris Aldane is all in on this area it's going to be real interesting to watch him finish today you see Kobe Krieger right there just a little ways down from Chris Saldane both of these guys really increased their weights yesterday from this time on to check in with you and we'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can do it again today uh, 10 years ago when I went up there the afternoon was better it looks like yesterday obviously the afternoon was better we'll have to see if today is going to be the same way to have two of our leaders in that same area quite often that spells disaster can this spot be a little impervious to that just simply because of the number of fish that are in that area yeah there's so many fish there. there's so much bait uh, and, and it gets pressure it, this place gets pressure all the time so it's really incredible what a fish factory it is here especially right up there when you have these conditions the fishing usually isn't as good unless you have all this current where it really pinpoints those fish on those current seams and those current breaks and Kobe Krieger and Chris Aldane have found the right ones there were 14 15 boats up there this morning all of these guys aren't catching them. it's not as easy as they're making it look
all the, we talk about subtle adjustments and movements, but watching Krieger right now gives you kind of an idea that those subtle adjustments and movements, it's easy to say how specific those seams are and that sort of thing, but it's also not easy to make those adjustments in that area because of everything you're dealing with. Yeah, you're exactly right, Dave. Where Kobe fished yesterday and this morning is really an obvious place. You can see rocks physically above the water, creating almost a little waterfall into an eddy area. If that place goes away because of the water level, for him to find another place as good right could here. be difficult. But I promise you, there are a lot of places. Those fish, they just adjust Literally where right they here. set up at waiting to feed, depending on the water flow and the water level. One of the big topics uh, literally over the last two years has been electronics. Well, literally over the last decade has it been electronics and it just keeps getting better. In that current, how does that affect that? Does that still play? So it's, it's interesting. Ten years ago, obviously, the electronics have come a long way in ten years. But ten years ago, my down imaging meant so much to me up there. Just being able to see those rocks exactly where they were and then back off and make cast to them. Chris Saldane up there now with his down imaging, his 360. You know, we just have more tools than we once did. The thing about being able to see these fish, uh, it's very, very difficult because they're tucked down you know, on the bottom right behind a rock so often. So they're not easy to actually see the fish, but you can identify the targets that you need to fish. I all would also would imagine with the number of fish, I mean, the coarse fish that we've seen them catch, they also have to mess with that. You know, if you're specifically just trying to mark fish, I mean, who knows what it is. Yeah, certainly we saw Chris Saldane yesterday and some today catching a lot of other species, and, and that's just part of it. When you have that much bait, uh, you know, every fish that lives in Pickwick, uh, every species of fish will be up there feeding on all those shad. You see so many birds. You just see all the all the wildlife being attracted to that one area. This area, obviously, we've talked about it a lot. Uh, that's where you took that win a decade ago, and it is highly thought about. I mean, everybody, every angler, I believe, at some point during pre-fish of this tournament did check out that area. Why am I not seeing more anglers there? Well, it's just uh, it's just very, very tough to go up there and mentally just stay for the few bites. Just not getting a lot of bites, but the quality is there. Justin Atkins knows this lake so well. He was up there this morning for about 30 minutes and then he had to leave. It's just mentally tough. Let's go back. Let's get some bonus coverage, David. How about, how about time for b and Trailer Hitch is bonus coverage with Colgate, Oklahoma's Luke Palmer. Obviously a two-time classic qualifier. And the coolest thing about him, I say a calm, cool cat from Colgate. And he definitely lives up to that. A very calm, cool, collected angler. And we're going to get a little sneak peek with him with our B&W Trailer Hitch's sneak peek. Well, it started out decent. Uh, I got down to the stretch that I've been catching fish off of and uh, made a few passes, ended up catching a limit. But uh, I just could never get a good bite today down there. I tried to, oh, there's one there. Maybe your good luck. Yeah. Uh, you might, stay, you might uh, talk to us the rest of the day if you don't mind. I mean, if you got time. <laughs> look, look at that. I mean, nope. literally making the well, BMW trailer hitches good. on the line, on the line, and hooks up on cue. I mean, uh, can you ask for anything more, Davey? We really appreciate the marshals. So many of them do a great job. We see a lot of good fish catches just coming from marshals doing, going above and beyond. They're they're learning from the best in the business, and also they're got their phones and, and uh, bringing some good footage like that. Watching stuff like this, it, it still amazes me, Davey, you know, how much in such a short period just live has changed this sport. I mean, there's no secrets. I mean, you, you're Luke Palmer and all of a sudden your Marshall's got a camera <laughs> in you. So you can't hide anything. But the one guy who can't hide is definitely our leader since day number one. And I kind of joke with you. If you look at our leaderboard, 
It's the battle of the door knockers. You got Sal Dane, you got Kobe Krieger, you got Bill Lowe, and you got uh, Brock Mosley. All these guys that have been so close to an Elite Series title. So you can't help but enjoy that kind of a battle. Yeah, I mean, we love the the guys like a, like a Greg Hackney in an event that, like, man, could he win another one. But it's really, really cool to see uh, all these guys that have so many fans. Uh, and we've seen Chris Saldane in particular there two years ago with three second place finishes in one season. So many people want to see uh, all of these guys win. And like you said, Kobe Krieger, Chris Saldane, Brock Mosley, Bill Lowen. I mean, I've, how could you not pull for a guy that's been so consistent? He's been so good, has a great family, travels with him, wants to see him hold that blue trophy over his head. And, uh, it looks like one of them's going to do it. They're, they're certainly the, the top four or five are all knocking on the door. Uh, Chad Pipkins, another one in that group as well, you know, had a win in the Opens, but still uh, searching for that Elite Series win. Talk to me about how important that is, Davey. You know, you do see that. It's quite natural where you see a guy get close a few times, and then when they finally crack through, what happens? Because it, it does seem when you get one win, more come. So it's a good point, Dave. I I've seen that with the first win, but I'll also, I, I remember when I won here in 11, I had a second place finish just one or two tournaments later. It, it just changes your mentality. I don't care if it's your first victory or your, you know, eighth or ninth or 10th. It just, it just gives you that confidence and, and frees you up to go, hey, hey, just fish to win. And it, it can mean everything. But you take a guy like Bill Owen, as good as he is, consistent as he's been, it's no telling what might happen when he finally gets that first win. And it's going to happen. It's definitely not a question of if, it's more a question of when. With really all these anglers, they've been all so close. And uh, don't put the cart before the horse because we are only at the halfway point of this tournament and we're not even done day number two. You got to make it through the top 50 to keep your tournament alive. Move on to day number three. And then, of course, we cut it down to the top 10. And our championship this time around, rather than championship Sunday, we're going to have a very rare championship Tuesday. <laughs> they may have a little less pressure, but you said that a lot of anglers said there wasn't a lot of pressure on the river. Why do you think that is? I, I just think the conditions uh, with the water being so high and things flooded out, there's other lakes that aren't quite in this condition there's so many good lakes here in this part of of the country that uh you have other options and uh you know i've been out on the water both days and i just haven't seen a lot of a lot of locals here right now i think a lot of them are probably at wilson and you know it's 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 pretty good too and it's just right over that road there yeah Definitely a bountiful area when it comes to bodies of water and incredible history, obviously, here in the Shoals area and uh, an incredible bass fishing community here. We had an incredible weigh-in crowd yesterday. What shocked you yesterday? I mean, every way, you know, there's always those things where you're like, this is guaranteed. I mean, obviously, uh, seeing guys like Justin Atkins struggle and that, that was a shocker for the crowd. But what stood out to you, Davey? Well, the, it was a great crowd at weigh-in yesterday. It really was for day one. I guess the thing that shocked me is we see what Bill Owen's doing and obviously having good success with it yesterday and today. There were a lot of good fishermen that did exactly what Bill's doing, basically. You know, maybe a different bait, but but that shallower water, the wood, the hay grass. Uh, you know, I can name off six or eight different guys that I thought was going to really catch him doing that, and Bill Owen's the only one that's been able to do it and have consistency with it. Yeah, so many locals that you would have thought, Scott Canterbury, so many guys coming yes. in this event. I'm sure there were there, there were some fantasy fishing fans scratching their head, but don't worry. It's Pickwick. There's lots of time left. As we learned yesterday, anything can happen in the last moments, and big bites like that that we saw from Brock Mosley can change your day, change your tournament. But if you want to stay in this tournament, you've got to stay in the top 50 and move into day number three right here at the Guaranteed Red. Bassmaster Elite on legendary Lake Pickwick in Alabama. The Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. And by Skeeter Boats. 
Pickwick Lake, an incredible fishery and an incredible day here in beautiful Florence, Alabama. The sun is shining, it's heating up, and it is time for a hummingbird bird's eye view of that, the target that everybody has talked about since day number one, and that is that dam. And uh, that dam is one of your trophies right <laughs> there, but that dam has dominated this tournament. Tell me what we're looking at, Dave. Well, Dave, this is an incredible shot here with the hummingbird bird's eye view. You can actually see what's going on. That's Wilson Lake over the top of that dam, and the spillway, that's water coming over the top. Uh, and that's what's creating all of this current, and that's what's attracting all of those bass, all of that bait, all of those birds. Uh, and you see those rocks, it's really, really important that you notice those, because if they weren't there, I don't think the fishing would be nearly as good because those fish need those rocks to protect them from that current. Well, you know what you don't need to protect? You don't need to protect your eighth Bassmaster win because it already happened. And the best thing about it is we can live it for years to come. Let's look back. Woo. So that's, that's just really incredible. Very similar situation, but a little different. In this case, the water was coming through the turbines really, really hard. So those fish were drawn to a little different area. You see there's not nearly as much water coming over the, the Wilson Dam. But the, the big key here was being patient, wow. being persistent. A lot of other anglers were fishing there. You had to figure out exactly which boulders and exactly what bait. And luckily for me, it worked out that, that year. And, and you were here for my, with, you MC in my first victory uh, since you became a MC. That's right, and and, and, and I, 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 that was the moment where I was like, "Wow, Davy Height is a, it, it, a lot smart. more athletic and a lot <laughs> smarter, a lot less smart than I imagined." Um, knees kidding. I, I, do you still have the scars? I, I do. I, I still have <laughs> the scars on my knees, but worth every second of it. That's a, a moment I will never forget. Well, we'll have to see if one of these guys can top that celebration, and I don't know that it has ever been topped, but we'll give them an opportunity because I know both these anglers, Chris Aldane and Kobe Krieger, would love to host that, hoist that blue trophy come Sunday. But you look at that dam, I mean, great opportunity to, to look at it. I guess a lot less gates were open at that time, and you talked about how that actually, you know, puts the fish in one area, yeah. you know. Exactly, Dave. Uh there's a, a big area there. It's, it's really hard to tell from just this shot, but there's a big area there that water, a lot of water, is coming over the top of that dam. So it's really spread these people out. Where Chris Saldane is and, and Kobe Krieger, they're spread out more than uh, we were spread out in, in 2011. Uh, those fish were, most of that water was coming straight through the turbines, and there was about a 30-yard wide stretch that, that you basically had to be in. And it, it made everybody, literally there were boats touching every day up there in, in 2011. These guys, it looks like they're close and they are relatively close, but not nearly as close as they are when the water's just coming through the turbines. It's too hard, it's too hard, Davey. I don't know how you did it. It's too hard fishing at the dam. I mean, it's just, it's rough, it's it's tough. Let's just let's just go down somewhere calmer, somewhere quieter. Let's join a Bill Lowe and then, I mean, he's not going to be near the dam. You know he's going to be in some some quiet little... That's what he's known for. Yeah, he's certainly known to get away from the crowd and, and flip a jig shallow. Get around the trolling motor, please. Thank you. Come here. Oh, what a nasty landing, but I got him. And he's going to help. <laughs> Woo. Maybe we'll just keep flipping docks for a little while. Fish is close to four pounds, ain't it, if he ain't? What's that? Pretty sure that's the call. Pretty sure. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, fish. And that's a good fish right there. To be letting go. 
horrible hook set, horrible everything. But it worked out. All right, everybody all right over there? All right, we getting closer. <sighs> um, I'd say he's a, got close to four, ain't he? I'd say three and a half. Yeah, I went to lift up on the jig and I couldn't find it. Whew. Craziness. Well, I've been saying all day, like, man, they ought to just slide right in there on the docks, you know? about it is you just gotta slow down and fish you know you can't get in a hurry you get in a hurry you don't fish the bait right you just I don't know I did throw one back right got two all right all right let's catch another one Whew. that's the weirdest bite man there's so much current Hydration, very, very important. Like it's it, good I'm to see that Bill Owen here. got very hydrated there. But uh, let's look at this fish. I mean, an incredible, and it's stereotypical Bill Owen. Really, it doesn't matter where you are. If that's where you imagine to see him fishing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mentioned earlier, I, I can't stop thinking about there's so many good anglers that tried this exact same thing <laughs> Bill Owen had success doing yesterday and he's having doing today. But the one key thing he said there that maybe makes the difference is you got to slow down maybe slow down and fish right and make sure you present that jig exactly like it needs to be a lot of these fish that bill has been catching i think are setting up to spawn or, or in the spawning progress and you don't want to move your bait through that area that, that they're bedding or that they're protecting if you move a bait through there fast they don't react to it. if that bait stays around where they're guarding then they will bite it tale of two anglers but it seems like they may be fishing different but it's same kind of story because kobe krieger fishing areas and doing things that we've seen a lot of other anglers do and not have success too is that the same deal just subtle adjustments he's figured something out to get those bites well i think first and foremost both of these anglers have a lot of confidence in what they're doing and, and confidence means so much in, in any sport and certainly in fishing but the other thing is Bill Owens found a good area of the lake down a lot farther. He's a lot, you know, 15, 20 miles away from Kobe Krieger. But Kobe has really done a good job finding the right current break, the right seam uh, for these fish to set up on. Oh, on. Both of these guys will be, oh. we lost one there. If the water continues to fall as fast as it did today, both of these guys might have to make adjustments the next two days. You hear what you just said confidence is key and you hear that a lot in this sport but why but what does it do to the angler what happens in between your ears what does that confidence do well i think it's just like any other sport i mean when when tom brady throws a football he's not thinking Don't it's going to be I, I, intercepted there's no need to talk about <laughs> or tom Mahomes. Brady. when he throws a football they're not thinking oh my gosh i hope it's not intercepted they're throwing it saying there's another touchdown for me and, and in fishing when you pitch a jig like bill lowen are you thinking, gosh, I need to be throwing something else, or I'm gonna let that jig stay there for a few seconds because I'm confident I'm gonna catch one. Well, you're talking about Tom Brady, so we're moving. We're moving. I mean, I, there's no need to talk about Tom Brady. He's talked about enough. Let's talk about a former Bass Nation national champion, Caleb Summerall, another guy fishing in areas that we've seen a lot of guys, but figuring out how to make them bite. Here we go. Yes! <sighs> Caught a three and a quarter.
Well, that'll put a smile on your face. And uh, Caleb Summerall having a good day. We are going to see how this all works out. Again, you got to stay in the top 50. And key bites happened all afternoon yesterday. And no different here today on Sunday, day number two, at the guaranteed rate, Bassmaster Elite on Pickwick Lake. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Stop number three of the Bassmaster Elite Series this day, number two, and a spectacular day here in sunny Florence, Alabama for the guaranteed rate of Bassmaster Elite. Atop the leaderboard, Kobe Krieger with 42 pounds, four ounces, but Bill Lowen right behind him, and you look at that leaderboard, a bunch of people knocking at that door. It is an incredible, incredible leaderboard of door knockers, but we're gonna have to find out who makes in that top 50. Your 50 cup guy right now, Brian New, our winner from the first event of the season. Yeah, it's really, really tight. It means so much because half this field being cut, it'll be so crucial to gain some points on day three. You know who I miss? I miss Brandon. I miss Brandon Polnick. I mean, let's talk to the prodigy. How about some bonus coverage with Brandon Polnick? Uh, Brandon, if you can give us just a quick breakdown on your day so far. Yeah, I've been... So the one thing I can say about Brandon's day so far, he has changed. Yesterday we saw him fishing the main river a lot. I think he's currently in ninth place, so he's still doing well in the tournament, no doubt. But he has changed from out on the main river banks to looks like he's in some backwaters now. Brent? Brandon Polnick, a lot has changed with him. One thing is definitely not his ability to close the deal on tournaments, but it's all driven from one thing, passion and his love for the sport of fishing. The cool thing about our sport, about bass fishing, is that it doesn't matter where you're at right now watching this you can make it to this level, right? There is opportunity for everybody. Doesn't matter where you're from, what your cultural upbringing is, doesn't even matter how much money you have, there is opportunity for everyone to make it. Every guy here has a story, um, you know, of struggle and financial problems and all of these things, but they had a dream, they wanted to make it, they had a passion, uh, and this is a sport that actually saved a lot of guys, right? That it gave them something to hold on to and to dream about. And I know when I was eight years old, growing up in Idaho, everyone said, there's no way you're gonna fish professionally on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And I pretty much dedicated my entire life to it. And so I'm a perfect example of being able to come from a place that's not known for bass fishing, and being able to make it to the top level of this sport. So if I can do it, any kid out there watching right now is able to make it. That's just incredible from Brandon Polnick. And one thing he said there I agree with a thousand percent, everyone out here has a sport. I mean, that's a, a, a story about how they got in this sport and how they got to the Bassmaster Elite Series. That's an awesome story from Brandon Polnick. Like I said, everyone out here has a story somewhat similar. Speaking of stories, the story of yesterday and today has been Kobe Krieger, and he's caught most of his fish right up there close to the dam. Oh, Megan. I'm something. Oh my God, he come off! I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, it was big. Like, I don't really think I ever stopped it.
Good night. Kobe throwing that crankbait. I haven't seen Zaldane and some of the other anglers throwing a crankbait, but one thing he has mentioned is the water seems to be more stained today than yesterday. So that extra thump and vibration from that crankbait might be a big key for him. I would imagine in that turbulent water, that reaction strike too, that's also part of the problem. I mean, you're going to be dealing with a situation where a fish just swats at it and also dealing with the problem of a lot of rocks, a lot of obstructions. Those hooks are going to take things. It's going to be a full-time job to keep your equipment on top of Yeah, there. you're exactly right. It, you know, typically if Gosh. I'm throwing a, a DT6 or a I DT10 like a and, and rocks like that, I would change hooks two or three times a day. It really will dull your hooks. It was big, I can tell you that. There's the drum. I believe it's a drum. Yep. So, so the drum will certainly not help him, but but after fishing up there for a few days, you can identify the species in the first pull or two. You know if it's a drum, a catfish, or a striper. Uh, it's not all humdrum. Uh, Kobe Krieger has enough to stay on top of that leaderboard. And the question is, can anybody chase down Kobe Krieger? We watched it happen all day yesterday. Big bites in the afternoon. And speaking of big things, Tommy Sanders, Mark Zona, and the crew back at the studio coming up after this. We'll follow the action all day long at the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite. Live coverage of the guaranteed rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Got another hour of live coverage for you here from this Bassmaster Elite number three, Pickwick Lake, legendary Pickwick Lake, guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite. One more hour of coverage, two more hours of fishing for these 100 anglers, the full field out there trying to make it into the top 50. Only they will fish tomorrow and only 10 will advance from day three to day four. Championship Tuesday coming up here. Kobe Krieger. Crafty veteran on top there. Ditto for Bill Lowe and Steve Kinney. Hey, we got we got some experience. Mark Zona on top of that leaderboard. Crafty McCrafterson, Tommy <laughs> Sanders, going to take a look <laughs> just yes. below the Wilson Dam. And I mean, it is getting a pile of attention here on day two. Taking a look at our Minn Kota unlock the lake as we slide on down past, well, McFarland Park, another area where there's been a lot of solid stringers and, well, a lot of attention right around there, too. Plenty of release fish. Steve Kennedy getting it done on his own. Gonna get down near the coffee slough area as we take a look at a little bit closer to the power line and Coger Island. Well, Chad Pipkins and Bill Lowen and Tommy taking a look at this Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. You know what was interesting? Watching one thing when Davey and Dave Mercer were doing their hit, we talked about this, Bill Lowen winning the shallow water game. And this morning he was very, very fishing very shallow, but very close to the main river. And we said, well, when is he gonna go shallow somewhere else and try to expand on this? And it looks like he has done exactly that. Mm. Expanding on his primary areas, we kind of get down near well, you got Bear and Yellow Creek, the Pickwick Dam. Only thing a little bit shaky is Clark Wendell at a very slow day. He's yeah. been left alone on day number one and number two, and he's been left alone by bass today. Scott Martin making a few big, that is a long, 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 long map. Um, but Tommy, <laughs> what I was talking about and what I say about Bill Lowen is he's really expanded on that shallow water game 
fishing shallow, but closer to the main river, if that makes sense. I think a lot of the fish that he's intercepting are basically, well, I don't want to get into one of his areas, but I think he's really close to areas they're funneling to, to where a lot of those males grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
And I just looked local from Florence, Alabama. Justin Atkins is still I fishless con- today, Ronnie. And wow, I confirmed is- that as well with his marshal. Oh, you're kidding me. That's confirmed? Yeah, I confirmed that's unbelievable. It. I'm stunned by that. Yes. Wow. 109 down to 109 p.m. local time. Down to 69th, zero fish today, zero happens. bites today. And we've seen him ping on the map up above the bridges near the tail race on that on that south side where Steve Kennedy and some of the, mm-hmm. you know, he's, yes. he's giving yes. it a try as well. Brock Mosley just landed a good one about five, six minutes Fox ago. Are live. No audio. So don't scratch my butt or anything. Don't pull out a wedgie. Man, you just have to wonder. Atkins with, you know, and, and, and mm. like that one. I mean, hooked up, one. Jack. Stay hooked up. Stay hooked up. That's another big one. Come in the boat. Get in the boat. That's the biggest one of the day right there. Mm. Give me some. Yeah. Same exact spot. Yes. Yeah. I like it when the scale don't even cut off. Getting rid of a two pounder. Yeah, that's going to put him in the top four, isn't it, Suits? Yeah. Over 20 pounds. Wow. On the day. Our fourth and pitching, pitching swim baits at Bluff Walls with heavy line. That does not suck, friends. <laughs> that <laughs> does not. Boy, the thing you look at our leaders, Krieger has a two pounder and his five fish. Same with Lowen, two and a half. Kennedy's got a 2.9 and he's over 20 pounds. Scott Martin's smallest is a 2. Joshua Straysner. Yeah, yeah, slower than boy. yesterday for him today. Could be a keeper in there. Jeez. Thought he was going to be bigger. Did you see him check that one, Zeke? Black on his tail. It does look like a chunk, right? I think that'll help. No, it was very interesting. Stracer right there just flipped, got the bite, and he immediately reached his arms towards it, gave it some slack before setting the hook, making sure it was a bite. Great rookie class here in the year 2021 on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Joshua Strasen picking up a much needed keeper right there. Let's take a look right now at our Seaguar Bassmaster Rookie oh. Watch. And there's Brian New, the winner of the first stop of the year, St. John's River. Through the course of this tournament, he has taken over the top spot there. Taking it away from Justin Hamner, and there's Strasener in third place. Pat Schlapper having a good tournament here as well. Queen, Kimura, Mark Frazier, Robertson, yep. Daryl Gleason. He's uh, fishless. Yep. Daryl Gleason doing some damage control and rebounding from Needed a miserable to. day one. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. Day two action continues here live on Pickwick Lake Bassmaster Elite, guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite. Lawrence, Alabama got some great, great competition going on out there. Some big moves up and down the leaderboard. About this time of day, you're kind of cra- craving some striker daily trivia, and I, I, I can help out here. How many of the 99 pros who fished the 2011 Bassmaster Elite on Pickwick Lake are fishing the Elite Series today, are here today? Would that be seven? 10, 11, or 13 of them. Think about that, Mark Zona. How many? From back there 10 years ago Actually, are still. 
I I whittled a stick down to this number before this tournament began when I was I was just right? on some stats. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I actually go through that yearly, especially mm-hmm. the last few years. <laughs> I'm going with D13. <laughs> well, no. I'm going with D13. Uh, well, what, what? B? D, he said. D, no, he D, says. Thir- D, D, D. Lucky I'll go number C. 13. You'll go C? I'll, I'll go, go D. C. I'll go D. How about that? Okay. I'm going D. D. Yeah, Such is, 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 is feeding the stats, and it's driving me nuts. Uh, that what? He's no. feeding these trivia answers to Zona. It's no. driving me uh, nuts. I don't think so. Hey, that uh, one. Hey, just so you know, that was a fastball right there, because uh, no. I do go through those stats. <laughs> <laughs> right down the middle, fastball. Okay. Good stuff. Outstanding. Good stuff. Hey, wait, while well, we we're coming off that striker trivia, you know when Mercer and Height were up there, and they did that feature. Anybody can do this, with Brandon Polinick. Yeah, that picture of young Brandon Polinick in that little rain suit is just as cute as a button. I love that picture so much. Absolutely. Yep. Back on the water right now. Clark Wendland live. (laughs) Clark started in our top 10 has had a struggle today for sure. He really needed it. Him and David Mullins both were in bucket D for Rapala Fantasy Fishing, which means you're 60th to 80th in Angler of the Year after two events. And those guys finished 1-2 in the points last year. So it was great to see him do well yesterday, but uh, a step back today. Like, he needs one or two more to make the cut, not drop below that. Right, right. Ron, was David Mullins, was he picked by a lot of folks? They were, the, they were the top two anglers picked in that bucket. I think it was 20% for Clark and like 16 or 15 for Mullins in bucket D, yes. Boy, yes. Clark Wendland had a big time game plan that we talked about earlier today, Tommy. Steeper banks, the deepest water in the back of these pockets down near the dam on the lower end of yeah, Pickwick. Pickwick. And yeah. he said, really? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and really, he said he, he saw some some local boats fishing through there yesterday, but he was really confident yesterday that he was after the weigh in that he's going to have a solid day. Said he's not getting a ton of bites a day, but they're the right ones. Well, it's been painful, oh. just painful. He has probably got no more than an hour to fish, I would imagine, either. Far Tommy, pick the, the winner. What? Pick the winner. The winner of the winner. tournament? The winner. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I it was random. It was out of nowhere. Pick it. Uh, you know? I'll say Kobe Krieger right now. Is that right? I'll mm. say Kobe Krieger. I don't know. Okay. We'll well, see. You got Z? <laughs> you know, you're looking at, yeah, it's really tail race guys bill low and fishing shallow i just think this sets up so naughty for steve kennedy i, I really do oh, okay well you mentioned that earlier interesting yeah i think kennedy's gonna be a a major headache by tuesday three-time elite winner kobe krieger never won the elite series had had great finish uh, i think last year at champlain a uh, year before that uh, uh in south carolina uh Winya bay his best finish, do you remember his best finish with the Elite Series? Best finish? Well, you said so champion. Wait a minute. Hold on. It was last year. Or it was, uh, no? No, it wasn't. Mm-mm. No? Several years ago. The Classic Qualifier, which was an oh, official heavens. tournament. Oh, yes, oh, Niagara Tommy. River. Stop it. See, yes, but stop see, it. it could be, he could have gotten last and similar. still had a top eight. I don't <laughs> want to hear that. Hey, hey, come on. See, that's Hold some on. suits trivia. I don't that like that. Painful. I don't like that at all. Just argue was with the Ronnie, facts if you like. Yes, his head coach was Jacob Poroznik in that <laughs> event. And that was Catch from one. the truck. That was actually from Michael Middleton right there in my so hey, hold on. What, Ronnie, did you commentate that turn that, that bracket? No, that was my honeymoon. I was okay. gone for that. I watched it though. On, I, and you know, which is why my marriage is oh, come now. fantastic. It, it was one of the most awkwardly great events it really I really was ever yes. remember calling with Tommy Sanders. <laughs> it was, it no. had it all. It had it all. I will say that. It did. No, I kid about that. Sarah's Sarah was great for letting me watch it whenever I wasn't working it, but sitting out on the beach watching uh that kind of I guess struggle is a good word was interesting. Yeah. 
The bracket yeah, it, only it was cleaner. like an accident. Yeah, it was an accident. You couldn't look away from is what it was. <laughs> See, you're not discounting Buddy Gross. He just landed a four-pounder. He's uh, he's out of cell range right now for his camera. And he's up to 16-5 on the day, fourth place it, again. It, hey, hold on, Brock Mosley. I'm talking about hooked up. Golly, man. Just put two huge small mouth in the boat to move all the way up to third place. Let's see what this one is. Oh. Get in the boat. Yes. Oh, my word. Thank you, Lord. I hate to let that fish flop around. <laughs> I don't want to hit that. Golly, that's a toad. Well, the smallies here are built so different from the Fort Loudon tournament, aren't they? And they're choking it now. Yes. That's another big. See, the, I think the Fort Loudon smallmouth won't come up to your boat and bite your feet, but these will try to rip your leg off. Yeah. One or four. I mean, they must eat a lot to be built like that and live in that current, though, if you think about it. Yeah, they're in the gym all day long, yeah. all these fish. The large mouth, too. What's so incredible is how far they swim in the summer to catch them all the way throughout the system. It's not like it's only at the horseshoe for smallmouth all year. They they are all the way down to Bear, Waterloo. It's it's incredible at times. It's got two bass that go three pounds, eight ounces. Dang it, my scale's acting up. It was doing this yesterday. Got to be better than three rod suits? Three eight. Yeah. He's got two three eights in there. Oh, three eight, you know? Might, might be close. Back in contention. Boy, we're going to see some really good stringers today at the way and across, really across the top 20, 25 compared to day one. What even was that bracket tournament? I mean, what was that thing? Oh my gosh, it's right after I cast. <laughs> yeah, yes, I know that. <laughs> what was it? What was it? What was it? It was a bunch of guys who were already qualified for the classic, trying to qualify for the classic, as I recall. Except exactly. Krieger, he was the only yeah. one. Yeah. The Krieger, who was the outside yeah. and needed it the most. But it was also the in like the I... fourth event of the year in, in between a mm -hmm. 10 event season, so it wasn't like all unofficial. Kind of made for TV fishing. Yeah. yeah. It was neat. It was great. Oh, I, I mean, was it was like the, why, why am I at this party tournament? <laughs> Brock Mosley, big time mover in I the mean, afternoon. I knew, I knew this would, I mean, this, I knew I could catch this weight. Man from Mississippi making his mark on oh, this yeah. tournament. He might be your pick to win it. Yeah. We'll keep watching. Not a, we'll not be a right back call. after a quick break here with a little bit more. We got another half hour of Bassmaster Live to bring to you. Live coverage of the guaranteed rate elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by Rapala. We're back. Day number two, trying to make it to day number three. 100 anglers out there. There's going to be 50 less to deal with tomorrow. This guaranteed rate bass master elite on Pickwick Lake. Kobe Krieger still on top. And Brock Mosley making a big move, Mark Zona. Tommy, can I pull the curtain back real quick and sure. drop a little bit of inside info? Super Marshall, a one Patrick Renwick from the Stray oh, Cast Show, yes, of course. is with Scott Martin and has just confirmed Scott Martin is definitely a pound or two light on his bass track weight, uh -huh. which will tighten it up, if you know what I mean, boy. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very tight there from 
fourth through seventh place right now. Could, uh, could shake it up even more. More reason to tune into the weigh-in. Coming up at 3 Central Time, 4 Eastern, right here on Bassmaster.com. We're getting ever closer to that time, but still time for big fireworks to happen on Pickwick. Which I will say, surprisingly, this... Tommy, yesterday Scott Martin was about a pound heavy on ah. Bass Track compared to what ah. he weighed in. So he might be going a little low today in his guesstimations to ensure that he is not <laughs> overguessing. Very good. Well, we talked about it earlier. Hank Cherry came across the board with a seven pound, seven ounce, and that tops Clark Wenlet seven six yesterday. What do you think it really is, Z? We don't have any clue. We don't have anybody with Hank Cherry. I'm sorry, say that again, Such. How big do you think Hank Cherry, if he would post it as a seven seven, how big do you really think it is? Me and Ronnie were thinking possibly he said seven twelve. I said maybe closer to eight. I don't know. Yeah. Uh seven fourteen. <laughs> Split the difference. It's just so hard to say these days, Such, you know. Especially so though, hard. Clark Winlet still holds the Phoenix Officially. Big Bass yeah. Yeah. Weigh it in. Yeah. of the tournament so far. So till uh, till the weigh in. Mercer happens. weigh it in. Lisa yeah. Talmadge weigh the, those fish. That's right. Oh, hooked up Chris Saldane. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see what it is. Needs number five. I don't like how it's fighting. Uh-uh, uh-uh. They have stripes on it. Oh, whiskers. Instrument. Had that spin roll to it. Yeah. Mm. I thought I heard something break. Looked like the bad thing is I had a bite. Dang, damn it. Oh boy. What well, Kobe's had a day. <laughs> Tommy, you said earlier he's got plenty of rods. He, I don't know, that's two Today, now. Casualty of war. We'll throw the jig up here a couple times first. Since he's tied on. Maybe that's what, what the, the sign is. If you break a rod first thing, you're going to break another one before the day is exactly. done. Maybe that's the old saying. I think we're starting to see Bill Owen kind of creep around his primary early morning stretch. Kind of looks very familiar. Mm -hmm. But a cool, diverse tournament with guys fishing below the tail race, bluff wall swim baits, guys like Chad Pipkins, a little more offshore, even though that's pretty shallow water. I mean, it's only four to eight feet of water Pipkins is in. Then you got your offshore, you know, and, and again, offshore is a loosely used term in this tournament. Guys like Buddy Gross, he's offshore, but again, shallower than usual here on Pickwick. Um, what one will end up paying off? Because rare do you have so, you know, so many different techniques that are playing throughout an entire system. Yeah. Main Lake Rip Rap, we've seen, man, yes. we've seen, seen it ever. Just about any kind of situation you want. Still coming hard from the Wilson Dam there when it was constructed. Actually, it's one of the tallest dams, maybe the tallest dam east of the Mississippi back in the late 30s and early 40s. Oh, not even big. Help 
thought he was a big one. Hurt my freaking ribs. Got some decent moves today from Wes Logan, Matt Heron, and Robbie Latuso, all in the 40s, all in the teens right now. 18 pound bags today. You know, I don't want to call unofficial power no, pole no, replays of the day. My battery's getting but low on me. Ron Moore. Ron Moore, you have sent around a picture of John Cox <laughs> oh. and his marshal staring at him. I don't know if we could screen a knowledge this before the end of the show. <laughs> we can it is possibly it is possibly the and I think Mercer was the instigator of whatever he has done to his head because I thought it was could not be beaten. Like I thought it was phenomenal and it's better. I mean, it is better. Unless you have flood like this, um, weekend generation always change changes, and uh, there's reason hardly any Saturday tournaments, and we're on the other end of the lake for most of them. But when you have a flood like this, it's hard to beat this place up here, unless the grass fish are just chewing. Four and a half. Okay. Still up on the mix. You got five? Come right up here. On this side of it. I got over 21. I'm talking to Caleb Sumrall. I went in there to call. Swim bait. Right. Thank you. Hey, they're just now starting to bite. Just be patient. Just be patient. Brock so, Mosley feeling good right about his there, situation. Right there, there's a little eddy. I mean, the, where the bluff ends, there's a little hole. Go get it. I'm going to sit there and watch. I'm going to sit there and watch. It's good to have friends and roommates in the Elite Series. Mosley, Livesey, right. Ravet, and uh, Summerall often travel together mm -hmm. and room together. As we bring it into the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon, I'm going to give in to, to, to Zona. You know, asking oh, you shall receive. Okay. I will show you that photo, Z, but before I do that, I wanted to show fans that may not know what fishing below the Wilson Dam looks like visually. You see all the current and all the water rushing through there, but but what are they fishing? How are they fishing it? Why are they fishing it? Here is just two screen captures of uh, some Google Earth footage of now, basically now, similar conditions, flooded, a lot, of, a lot of water coming through, and then also when it's low. You can see it looks very similar to right now. You see the islands of trees and some rocks, and you can see all the different current breaks where it will kind of get more like rapids around here. And this is basically a region that Chris Aldane's been in where it floods by. But then let me show you where when it's not completely flooded and blowing through the Wilson Dam, when it's stagnant and it's low, this is all of the structure and the cover that these anglers are fishing around. All of these rocks, there's trees, there's obviously probably stumps and other debris as well over the years. And then this would be kind of the blow through when you see it come through the dam here and it blows through to Kobe Krieger's area. That's why it's not just coming straight through to him, it's coming sideways because it's wanting to push around the island that way. So a couple different current breaks around Jackson Island right there below the Wilson Dam. Pretty strategic for people who live there, but for those who've never fished it, that is why they're positioning in the same spots over and over and not switching it up and exploring other areas. Now Z, I'm gonna give you yeah. the gallery yeah. of John Cox's 2021 year. 
It all started when his daughter wanted to dye her hair blonde, and he said, I'm going to show you why you should not dye it blonde. This is what he did, and this is what it looked like. Then, that's just dry. No product, no hair care products or anything. Here is a little bit of product and, you know, probably some water as well. It's kind of got uh, more, you know, it's got that down. He's got the good, the Florida tan going. He's kind of, it looks like one of those little, uh, one of the little rag dolls that, that girls play with when yeah, they're little. Andy. You know, yeah, yeah, raggedy hair. And then this was oh. today, this morning, <laughs> after only catching one bass yesterday, Dave Mercer said that he wanted to put co cornrows. And not only is it great, it gets the reactions. Check out the look right. that his marshal. Yeah, and if you look closely at that marshal, he's not only snagged a great haircut, he's gotten the fantastic actor Robert Duvall to serve as his marshal. So oh that's my goodness. Tommy and Ronnie, just so you know, Tommy Sanders did that at a Kima Redfish Cup event <laughs> with Mark Seppi. 13 years ago to yeah. this day. That's right. There's he nothing, did that one night. He will not admit to it. There's nothing new under the sun, as they say. Hey, it's all been some, done before. Huh? There's some special stuff coming up in 2021, uh, Tommy. We can get you to do it this year as well. We'll, we'll do. We'll do. Yes. Absolutely. Redfish has a small limit today, though. <laughs> oh, we got some more fishing for you. A little bit more when we return. The Guaranteed Rate Elite at Pickwick Lake is sponsored by... Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Berkeley. Got about 10 minutes of Bassmaster Live yet, yet to bring you from fantastic Pickwick Lake and the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite full field today, but we cut it to 50 at the weigh-in, which is coming up in about an hour and 10 minutes. Four o'clock Eastern, three central time. Kobe Krieger started the day with the lead. He has been tenacious, held on as best he can. Probably like to give him, have himself a little more insurance before this day is over. Great day for Bill Lowen, Brock Mosley, Mosley ditto. Steve Kennedy, and we see an eighth place right there. That's where we're headed right now. We're going to get out to Chad Pipkins, who has also had an excellent day on the water. God, I can't stop thinking about John Cox's hair. <laughs> he is not getting a really good look at Chad Pipkins' damage, and you're only looking at maybe a five to ten acre area at most. Chad Pipkins, and the one common theme. If you look at a lot of our leaders, Come boy, on. they have not moved from where they started this morning. Man, it has been tough. It is probably one of the toughest condition days that you can get. East winds, post frontal, and uh, it's, it's had a little window this morning and caught the three I did. Then it's just been grinding around. I was fortunate to you know catch a two and three quarter and like one over five in here, like within about five minutes and seem to get a bite or two every hour or so. A lot of them are missing it. I'd caught a four pounder on a trailer hook. They just don't want to bite. You know, I, I probably got 17 pounds, which is, I feel like a pretty good bag for today. So happy to have it. And at least we get to play again. And if they would ever start to eat, like I think you could crush them. I just don't know if it's going to happen, you know, tomorrow or the next day. And good news, we get to find out tomorrow at least. So we still got time. I got a, you know, 45 minutes of fishing. I need w one big bite and we got close to 20. So we're in the mix. Stay tuned. <laughs> it only means one thing here on day two of this event on a Sunday, no less. Oh my hey, Chad God, Pipkins, on, it was slow. It was painful. It was not happening. You needed one bass. You needed one to fill your five fish yeah. limit. Well, you did exactly that. That bass right there here on Come Sunday, on. as you said, Tommy Sanders, the first day of spring. Hey, Ch <laughs> Chad Pipkins. <laughs> I try. I know. I know. It's the end of the day. We're getting ready for semifinal Monday. But that bass right there, as he called a five pounder, we're going to call a little bit closer to six pounds. You know what I mean, Such? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Chad Pipkins, you are the Power Pole replay of the day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. Little fist pump right there.
And to his to his left shoulder from where his boat is pointed is the shallow side of the, the main channels over to the right. Okay. Right where yep. we're looking. Yeah, that's right. And the yes. left side, there's a lot of ditches and whatnot as well. That we're at the meat market fish. right here. We should go down. See you guys. I know there's a big one down here waiting for us. I misspoke on Brian Newell. He's, gotta he, he's got a bass lips. track glitch. He's got about 15 pounds. He should be about 12th place. All right. Okay. Not on. bad, yeah. Hey, but if you kind of look at, and, and not to bring up, we don't like to bring up negativity. Yeah. We don't like That's to do that at the end of Bassmaster Live. No buzz kills. Only yeah. if it helps the narrative. No, but <laughs> if you kind of look at Justin Atkins' day, if need one it big is, old velociraptor. You know, Justin Atkins knows so much about this place. You get caught running around a lot in a tournament mm -hmm. like this. If you look at your leaders in you this tournament. Lost six inches of water. I mean, I just feel like that's down. getting it right when yeah, they start. Every going. one of them, Such, has got into one general region for the most part and just picked it to pieces instead of running all over. Really, the person that's covered the most water has been, well, Scott Martin started right at McFarland and then going to the bottom end of Pickwick. But really, as a whole, the guys that are dominating mm -hmm. in this tournament, setting down, picking it to pieces. When old BP hasn't caught a bass in hours, the fish whisper is tough. Yeah. We had some good hair conversation about John Cox a little bit ago. I, I, I want to say yeah. another reason to watch the weigh-in. If Chad oh, Pipkins right. shows us some hair oh, like God. he did at the weigh-in <laughs> yesterday, that was off the chain. I mean, that was yeah, absolutely. That was fantastic. Yeah. You'll take a look back. Here's nice a box. new age, new age Byron Velvet. Behind the box, I got to pee again. <laughs> I'll wait a second. It's like Ian Poulter. What's up? Let's see, it's great though because <laughs> Pip yeah. Pipkins cashes Ian in on it. Pee. He's got the salon Ian. product sponsor. Yeah. Right. I'll wait a second. Ian Poulter. <laughs> I'll go here after this. <laughs> that was tight. All kinds of bait right here on this bluff. Ought to be a bass on here. Caleb, some wrong. Slow start, climb back into this thing, got himself four fish. Get one more, he'd be looking even better. Should easily make the 50 cut though today for sure. Fish tomorrow. Whoa. Sweet whip around right there, looking at Brock Mosley. Have we mentioned Tyler Rivette? He's really had a good day. 1910, a, four, right. a couple You're four pounders, a five pounder. Off Tyler Rivette. Jumped Jump from 22nd to ninth place right now. Man from Raceland, Louisiana. Which I will say, I gave Tyler Rivette heck because he has came. He came to to Pickwick every single June and July when I did for college events and competing against each other. And when this got moved from June to March, he said, dang it, man, I was looking forward to it in June. And I said, why? You never caught him on the ledges in wow. June at Wildlands. Oh, and I, I ragged wow. him. Wow. And he said he was still looking forward to it, though, even though he didn't know it in March. And it's obviously paying off. So, Tyler, you know what? I'm sorry. I'll kiss your hand later for and yeah. apologize. But sure. I, I was, you know. I had to, I had to just let him know had, I knew his I knew it, I knew the resume. Trowel out a little mental cruelty for him there, didn't you? It's okay if you caught him in college one day, you just blink and you'll not catch him the next day. It's okay. <laughs> well, it's been a good day of fishing. Really, really, really solid. Yes. When we leave, they still got an hour, some an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, we know from experience. Oh. I, I, I really feel, oh. I will say this before we go today, that 
Champlain is often praised up north as being one of the best tournament venues, and it may not get the love of the St. Lawrence or St. Clair, mm -hmm. things like that. Pickwick is that down south to me, especially the Tennessee River. Gunnersville, Chickamauga get the love. Pickwick is a great tournament venue, and that's why we're going to see it still do well tomorrow and Tuesday. You have made it vividly clear. This is your favorite body of water. I love it. I love it. You have made it vividly clear. We're all, we're all on the same page with that right there. Tomorrow morning. Not a close second. <laughs> 8 a.m. Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com. We crank it up and give you seven hours, seven straight hours of coverage of day number three, semi-final Monday. For the first time in recent memory. Will Bill Lowen punch through? Man, what a, a guy who's overdue for a win on the Bassmaster mm. Elite Series. One of the Lord, best to never win one. Could be Kobe Krieger getting his first one. Yeah. Could be Chad Pipkins getting his first win here, here or Brock Mosley. Right yeah. Be a whole host of others who move into the picture during the course oh, of the day Lord, tomorrow. They ain't that big. Things just seem to be getting better and better on Lake Pickwick. Can't wait to see you 8 o'clock tomorrow morning right here on Bassmaster.com. The weigh-in coming up right here at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. See you there. Down the gullet. Woo!